everybody? Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up hill. Because she got a great ass. And you got your head all the way up it. We'll return after these messages. The following is an unpaid advertisement for Breaking Rad. Oi, it's Guess Who! Comic State Edition. The phone is trying to guess when you play Guess Who. If your person old. Yeah. Oh yeah, that nerd was a doubt. Is yours a straight male? I'm not sure. The phone is trying to guess when you play Guess Who. Has your person fulfilled the book? Nope. Whoa. Uh -oh. That means it's that you. Where's my sandwich? Are you? Yeah. Are you? Hi there. It's Cal Jameson. You win. Let's play again. Game cards do not actually monetize your hate. I have an excellent idea. Let's change the subject. <laughs> Hello! Hi. I like your ham-fisted <laughs> management of clicking those fucking videos, Phil. Ice then. clips are good. Dude, I forgot about that guess who one. We got a the bunch of people... Was Oh, so good. Shout out to uh, 6 a.m. Comics for making that over on Breaking Rad. Good guy, Mark over there. What is up, everybody? We just witnessed the first, what's it called? Indie cockfight? Cock, cock fight. I yeah. know, commiserations to Irene for losing miserably. You know, it's just she a won. Shame. She tried. Wait, what? She. Wait, what? That's why she's not here. She's celebrating. She for, won uh, without us against Dillard. She what? Beat Dillard. I, I there was some sus stuff about this. It was 50 50 at the end when <laughs> when he no and poll. It was 50 50. So. No, 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 no. Dillard said five minute poll in 15 minutes. He says, <laughs> Let's keep it open till the auction's finished. He just decided, I'm gonna keep it open for as long as possible to see yeah. that the edging then. When leaving the poll open caused it to 50-50 edge, he's like, well, can't end it now. It's a 50-50. I know. I said, I said if they did a 50-50, it should be a, a next week rematch, like a sudden death rematch somehow. I don't, I don't know how you'd do that. but No, it should be a real-life manhunt. They should actually have to try and fight to the death. <laughs> well, shout-outs to Dark Kid for putting that on. It seemed like it was an awesome stream. I got to catch a little bit of it. Uh, shout outs to everybody in ow, everybody in the chat right now. Sorry, I'm having some muscle cramps, so I down. I, I was like, did you get bit on, by man. like a centipede or something? No, no, it's uh, from the gym. But um, shout outs to everybody in the chat for being here. If you're first time on the channel, please like and subscribe. Uh, Zade Comics, I'm Phil Diaz. My brother and I do a show Fridays, the Diaz Brothers show. Been doing that for a really long time. Been doing like almost 100 and 80 episodes i think more of the hard line on monday nights but you guys can keep up with all of uh our comic stuff that we do here on this channel and this week is my week to host the creative block which is our thursday night show where we talk about comics creating comics storytelling uh and creative talk i guess you'd say we're all creators um we make comics i'm a writer these guys write and draw and then Irene, our, our fourth here. You know what? I mean, we always got to carry her uh, through the finish line on these shows. But once again, she's a little late. She's celebrating. Hey. She's doing the victory lap. Um, I know. She, yeah. she says she's also oh. drunk. So uh, if you guys haven't seen the show, maybe if you're wearing headphones, take them out of your ears when she comes into the stream. So I'm warning. She's not the only one. I have drank an entire bottle of wine. What entire bottle? I have, I have the second one right here. I don't know, it's oh, party time. nice! I didn't know it's like party time. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking the. Uh, this is French, I think. What is this? Solil. I think it's French. Uh, it doesn't have alcohol in. Oh wait, Phil's teetotal. He's a dry guy. Teetotaler? Yeah. If I Phil was a character in Mario, like pop. he'd be a dry bones. Yeah, dry. get out the ketamine no. Dry guy, what's up, everybody in the chat? D Wag is in the chat. Good to see you, Alex VRB TC J Dalla. It's been a while, brother. Good to see you. Um, a guy in his room says Phil is gay. I uh, appreciate that. Good to have you. Jab Philly, Philly, a different Philly is referring to, seeing as the Phil he wrote has one L. Oh, is, that's right. Yeah, different Phil. <laughs> I had to talk to a Phil with one L this week, it was kind of awkward. 
Wait, your <laughs> fill has your L has two fills. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're Look not his drunk? name. <laughs> Phil just collects L's left and right. <laughs> How have I known you this king. long and not yeah, know I got that your, more L's your L has two fills? He's the king of L's. Cam says, He's like, Phil, remind Irene to give me payment info when she gets here. We're speaking of oh Irene. Um, I think I have an intro here. Maybe I don't. It'd be funny if he said that when she's not even here yet. Speaking the of Irene. second L is silent. I guess we'll... <laughs> Screen. There she <laughs> is. <laughs> Congratulations on losing, Irene. It was a tough battle. I suppose Dillard was just too good. Oh yeah. You. Yeah, he fought well. You know, he def he won fair and square. I'm the loser. Was, um, His piece was so well very composed. Well won. Yes, it was. It was well composed. Mine was better though. I should have won. Mm -hmm. I thought you all, you all voted for me. I thought you guys are gaslighting me. <laughs> oh, I'm so gay for you. We never language. do that around here. That's not something that happens on YouTube. Uh, lying to me. Lying to me is the correct term. We got no. Dark Gift. Hold on a second. Dark Gift Comics with a super chat. This is amazing. Starting off the night right. $5. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I think you just sent me this because I sent him a super chat. <laughs> Are you okay? Watching cockfight. Back Hope Narwhal no. was paying attention, <laughs> so he has, so he knows what to expect next week. Dude, this is a weekly thing. Yeah, he's next do, week he's doing. Next week it's me versus Alizmat, and I will wow. be sending him night letters leading up to it. So. Yes, this is great. You should. You should. That's this is like the old WrestleMania that we used to do with promos and stuff. Uh, it's bringing back the hype and fun. Oh, yeah. I'll film a promo for sure. Yeah, I'll and I appreciate it. it. Dark Gift. Out in the woods. Streaming every Thursday as well. Uh, I think next week, whose channel is it on? Uh, Narwhals? What, this show? Not yet. I don't think it's me. Is it? Maybe it is. Who's it after? This show or the Irene? next battle show? You... No, no, no. The no, next it's not mine. Read a block. I, I think it's... Week. I thought it was Jake. What did Jake already do? I, mean, I just did it. Just did it. It, it. Was it was amazing. So we could no. like the I swear to God, lineup. it's you, Narwhal, because it was me and then Jake. It's you. It's you. If you want to, if you want to accept that schedule, I'll gladly go after you. But the the original schedule is Phil Narwhal. Wait, Phil. I'm you sorry, Nawal. I brought it up. Check my, anyway, I'll check do my it. YouTube. No, we could do like a Thursday night lineup. It's uh, the cockfight. Bancroft goes into cockfight. Cockfight goes into creative block. Creative block goes into Jack show. I'm going to give Alice Matt a taste of the narwhal nuge. You guys know what I'm saying? Guys, I literally no, streamed no. two weeks ago. <laughs> Wait, two ah, weeks? Get... Three... <clears throat> That's okay. Guess... Narwhal next week. He can he can oh. do his art battle and then well, jump no, right narwhal into his stream straight week. away. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but let's switch. It's fine. Let's switch. All right. Well, thank you, Dark Gift, for doing that and for the super chat. Guys, if you are uh, new to the channel, every time you super chat, you get an extensive thank you by us bonking you on the head. Now, here you go. I gotta I got say, the design for that show is actually really fucking good. The surprise uh, wheel rolls? Come on. You got extra character and minus 30 minutes. For the first show, that was so perfect. They were so perfect. It really does raise the tension. If you're watching, it really is raise, it's, it's uh, a good design. Honestly, good design. That, that was a well-designed. That was a challenge. Yeah, well done, Anthony. <clears throat> yeah, I, I missed the start. How did the... It was like a wheel? It was a wheel. Everything was a wheel. That's pretty cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. It was a show. I, I nice. It was a wheelie good show. Wheelie. We got Snuggy in the chat. Michael Deitcha. Good to see you. Caleb Reynolds. Good to see you as well. Yeah, so uh, I guess we'll start off this week or uh, this show by saying what we did this week before we get into the topic. It's going to be pretty free flow this week because I was very busy at work today. Phil put in a lot of preparation for this episode. Yes. He has a, 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 a flesh out. It's definitely not just party time where we're going to drink and apparently pop pills. Yeah. I'm, You're popping pills? My gosh. I don't like partying. 
I'm a, what they call a stick in the mud. Mm-hmm. The pill, if the pills are blue and diamond shaped, so get ready. <laughs> does anyone know? Does no one get it? No. Yes, no it's one. It. Dick pills. No one. Dick. No one knows what Viagra looks like. Um, <laughs> you'll need eight showers of preparations. What's up, T? Uh, TJ, right? The name TJ. What's up, TJ? Good to see you. Uh, Kirby Kirby says, "Phil, so will Master Blaster show?" So this is a thing that Kirby Kirby wants me to do. He wants Brandon and I to enter indie cockfight as Master Blaster, like <laughs> a, a, a double team to take on. I don't know if it's one person or two other people, um, but I don't know if we'll do that. We'll see yeah, how this you season could, like, goes. Tag someone in somehow. That'd be fun and weird. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Bring a secret. Oh, weapon. If, if the wheel was like a tag team thing, the other person had to finish your art. <laughs> you have that to switch art pieces halfway through. No, I've that's actually done something be... like that. That's that's hard. Yeah, we can do that too digitally. Yeah, the um, oh, Sim and a bunch of guys back years ago were doing like a collaboration piece, or they've also did like Pictionary and stuff like that, where it's the program you log into and you could everybody in a room could draw on the same picture digitally like mm. in the web browser so that'd be interesting to team up with a game show or something like that uh let's see phil has the mind of a child i also have the child's <laughs> laughter and what's more precious than a child's laughter i say nothing nothing mm-hmm. uh all right so what'd you guys do this week anything just top up, secret or... stuff, super top secret. What do you mean top secret? Oh no, I did a convention in Port Angeles in the town. I thought Island. you weren't even going to be here tonight, uh, Narwhal. Yeah, I got to go. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> See you. Well, from eight to nine, I'll be gone, so I'll be back. That's I'm isn't gone. that a time that's already passed? I've been so confused with you, Ty. Yeah, no, well, not for him. In Portland or some shit. Yeah, he's so. three hours. Oh, your time. time. Yeah. I, look, no, well, if I'm not allowed to refer to time as my time, you're not allowed to refer to time as your time. Yeah, we all have to know. obey our EST overlords. Okay, that's yeah. right. EST now. would be 11 to midnight, I guess. I'm, I'd be gone. Wait, we're all in different time zones. <laughs> oh, look at this. Hey, Shelby. Hope you're all having a terrific night. Not you, though, Phil. Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Man, the, the Shelby Phil rivalry. Yeah. Rivalry. Sorry, I drank an entire bottle of wine. Um, I send them to Caleb you. Caleb Reynolds asked about my river bathing challenge, and so far only Leem from Australia has done it. But in classic Leem fashion, he claimed he did it, but did not provide proof. And I Wait. did honor his uh, his supposed that he did it, but I'm skeptical. Where's so, the proof? He I thought he was supposed to do a video. Yeah, yeah, that's what I told everyone to do. And he's like, I tried, but like my phone wouldn't work. And I was like, okay. <laughs> what Get the fuck? out of here. Yeah. No, I, have you not heard of the hashtag, be- hashtag believe all leams, Phil? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't mind. Helps. Yeah. It's that. So that's one because three possible people can win. So it's still open. I might close it in a week or two. Um, but it's still so Caleb asked about it. Caleb, I really want to see you bathing in a river if you can. But with that, I will say don't get eaten by crocodiles. Don't drown, obviously. Don't whatever get anything swimming up your urethra. Don't mm. any, do anything crazy. Don't drink river water. Don't get Giardia. I got Giardia in high school. It was no good. But I think I can't get it anymore, which is nice. But what what is that? Nice reverse it's like, psychology, it's by from, the way. It's from drinking mm. uh water th- that cows have pooped in. We'll give you Giardia. So if you're like drink oh. farm ditch water accident, I just accidentally did it. I think I was swimming. The rad bovine cocktail. I've yeah. Heard of it. Disgusting. Well, yeah. If you guys didn't know, go film yourself in a bathing in a river, and you could win some goodies and a sketch from. Wait, what do we win? I could I could build a river. Yeah. Okay. Build a river? No, you, you win. Build, a, a why bunch do you need of to build a river? Narwhal. Yeah, you need to go to an actual river and then bathe in it, and then send me the video, and then I'll send you a book and an ink sketch. Do you not have rivers in England anymore? <laughs> no, they all dried up. The they all dried up around the. It's around the time we killed all the dire wolves. Wait, wait, go jump in the Thames. 
Jake. The, yeah, the, the Thames. The Thames. That's how we all say it all the how's time. How's the temperature Everyone... over there, uh, Jake? How's the temperature over there, in, Jake, in Fahrenheit? In the uh, Royal U- UK for Shire? I don't yeah. know. It's like normal-ish. It's like not even that cold anymore. It's like coming out of winter, going into the the spring. I don't know. I don't even know Celsius, Phil. You think you think oh. you're trying to school me on on the F? I don't even know the C. Well, can you go? Do you go out without like a hoodie on or whatever? <laughs> yeah, but I don't have fucking Robocop brain to measure the act literal temperature of the air. Don't you have a phone, dude? Look at this. Can... Your phone has a thermometer on it. It's really to the internet. Oh, okay, fine. I guess I could look it up says it's temperature. Forty three degrees out. Forty three degrees. Dear Fahrenheit Google. Out, Brian. What is the temperature God. where I live, not counting my VPN? It's foggy and 10 stone. Is it foggy? Oh, it says on my computer. It's 8 degrees C, mostly cloudy. Windows has it right here because Bill right. Gates doesn't want me to escape cold. my temperature. Someone convert that for me. 8 C. No, that's cold. It that's just... what it converts as. Oh, is it cold? <laughs> it's cold? Yes, it's cold. But it's nice it's, and warm. In honestly, Celsius. Well, that's good. Zero is freezing in Celsius, so it's pretty easy. Um, Am I wrong? Is that right? <laughs> I don't think that's right. Yes. Fifty. Right. Is it right? Fifty degrees Fahrenheit, Cam. Thank you so much. That's chilly. Cam. The winner. Did he win the auction piece too? Oh yeah. <gasps> I'll get back to you, Cam. Thank you. So you much. have to hit him up. I will. Oh, I shall do that now before I forget. You. All right, Jake, what did you do? Did you go? Did you put any challenges <clears throat> out there to Australians? <laughs> I, I would. It would be fun to lay the challenge down to Bancroft on the battle, but you know, Ooh. he's obviously not going to want to do it. He doesn't want to face a, a stallion such as myself. But look, it, I would be a fun contestant. But yeah, I I gladly I gladly battle Bancroft in that battle. But no, he would he would. Well, he's rolled he's challenge. rolled before, right? Rolled? And you've rolled before. You mean a literal fight? I don't know if Bancroft's actually done Brazilian jiu jitsu. Like jiu jitsu. I don't know if Bancroft is he in the chat. Bancroft, have you actually done jiu jitsu? Because he's I would jitsued with children with his children. If you've jitsed, that would be. Gr- I mean, ah, uh, okay. Here's the weird thing. I love doing jujitsu roles, and I'll fight with anyone, and it'll be great, and they'll hate me afterwards because everyone, everyone hates rolling with me. Every they they well, they roll with me once, and they don't talk to me for like two weeks. Wow! But like, you humble. Um, would you say you humble, humble men? You humble men. No one wants like a three hundred pound guy lying on their chest, <laughs> only, with the only pressure points <laughs> being my chest on the and my tiptoes on the floor, slowly suffocating them. It's not even there. a fight. It's Wait, horrible. You, just, you need to find another three hundred pound man too. Oh, oh that's like, horrible. Hey, have you guys seen the scene where Leonardo DiCaprio gets raped by that bear? No, so, I've heard about it though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's I like don't doing th- Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with anyone. The thing That's is, not what he, happened. I, he, <laughs> he, he, he BJ data bear. He, uh, he he got the bear knocked up. Well, no, like I would be open to rolling with anyone I knew from like the interwebs, I guess. But like it would feel at least at least five percent gay. Like you knew them outside of that. Like there's a just different strata of person. There's the per- yeah, just five. Just well, five. that's perfect because you're you're like five percent gay. Just at 5%. least five. Uh, Alex VRB <laughs> says I can wear spiked armor and roll with you. That is Jake's favorite animal that you would become, and that might not work in your favor. Oh, he I would, would just want to hug it. you the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you look like a hedgehog. You'll be a, a hug jog. Uh, has but, yeah. I, Has he done jujitsu? He's he's clearly he's like a roller. Ch- I don't think so. Ch- no, right his now. kid does. He so. rollerblades is what he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, like I'm it. out of I'm out of practice. He could uh, if he boned up, he could uh, he could take me boned. Up. Yeah. Right, what did you On do his... this week, Jake? Besides, oh, uh, this this week's been uh, kind of crazy. Uh, mm-hmm. I was on a. Uh, I can actually bring stuff up. I can finally oh, bring good. stuff up that I've done. Unless you don't want to show those character designs on stream, Phil. But uh, yeah, no, I've, no, had, I've had I've had a. 
prohibitively intense ADHD high uh, for like a week and a half. And then over the last two days, I crashed. So Sounds I've been like trying to manic. deal with that. Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty manic. But I've done I've done so many character designs. Um, do but look, yeah, I'm finally Whoa. I'm finally working on Connell. I'm up to like page 13 in rough pencils on the pages. Uh, I've been taking everything you've heard from people saying, oh, it's funny. It's great. Well, it's even better now. Because I've been improving improving the layouts. Um, yeah, for those on... that don't know, Jake's working on his own book. It's set to launch this year in October. Yeah, October, October 1st. That's right. Uh, it's the, the cockiest book around. But yeah, I've been, I have a rule. I have a rule, with, which we've, I've mentioned before, which is never design on the page. Because sometimes when you're like blazing through pencils, you can be tempted to just... Oh, there's a weapon like oh they have a dagger here or there's a weapon or an invention or like even a character's face in the background yeah um it's it's like oh i'll just design it on the page and it always looks shit or at least when i do it so i i force myself to pretty much do like a design um for like everything so like here are here are a bunch of the block babes i was a big fan and of dd i think dd is my favorite do oh, you like yeah. dd hey, Jake, yeah i stole that rule from you but i break it all the time <laughs> yeah, it's fair play to do it. I think I broke it the other day. I did a separate design, but it was on the page. <laughs> nice. So I broke the rule whilst not breaking it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I've done, I've even done some a bunch of character designs that I haven't put up on Twitter. Uh, DD is the waifu. I'm glad you all like her. I, I actually wondered which, which, uh, which one people would like the most. Uh, I thought most people would go for. Uh, puff puff to be <laughs> to be honest puff puff really i, I like i like yeah, the one yeah, with yeah. the sandwich yeah. in her hand yeah i thought everyone need, wouldn't just discard this but i i like algna you know who i like the least gash fuck that bitch <laughs> oh jesus christ i think jake I thought gash was more standard what guys like no see yeah. gash looks like the troublemaker you know? Oh, it's her expression. I see. Yeah, she's like a uh, one of those trailer park girls from Ed and Nettie. She reminds me mm -hmm. of one of those. I Jake's see. dead, by the way. If you guys saw. <laughs> rip, rest in peace. Yeah, rip Jake. That's mm -hmm. a good trick. He he's has a good run. Do that whenever he wants. What's Wait, now on? he's back. He's just frozen. He is doing a, get a bit. He drew a lot I, of a uh, blue oh, he's back. or girl uh, porn. It was a good run. Oh, hi, Jay. You were talking about Gash. Short for yeah. Gashley, apparently. Gashley, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's not just referred to. So these I characters like are a race in your book called uh, Blorks, right? Yeah, they're blokes. I did the, I did a bunch of male ones. But yeah, there's, there's uh, you know, it's a fantasy, a comedic fantasy. Uh, and so there's... There's many fantasy races uh, that appear in those kind of books. And the Blork are kind of like a parody of fantasy races in general. Mm -hmm. So I can bring up some of the male ones. That uh, Here we go. I actually... Here we go. I'll share this instead. See, look, I can flip it over. So Twist was... She was, like, pretty early on. You know what? I had... I, I always struggle drawing cute uh, woman faces because I kind of, like, overthink it. And I always be like, I've got to draw a cute woman face. So like now I've got to look at reference. And it's like you try and develop a separate style instead of just drawing it in your style. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, on these, I was like, fuck that. I'll just draw them however I draw. And they turned out pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think yeah. they all have distinct personalities from each other. Mm -hmm. Body type <clears throat> silhouettes as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we got Twist here, Dungo. Um, Is he up in Australia? Oh, i never seen these guys. You ever seen Clifton and Clancy? Clancy oh. just Clancy just happened. Yes, I, was so, I was so oh, warmed up. Right. He just <laughs> appeared. I was like, I want to draw a short, like Hans Molman type. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's great, dude. That guy's nice. That's a really good design. Yeah. Oh, Clancy. <clears throat> so I think he'll he'll have. There's always the weird random characters that end up having like weirdly uh, big roles, like. There's a there's like a, a shaman character who's like a little seed guy in a novel. You said you enjoyed him from like the first script, and so I ended up giving him like loads of um, screen time. But yeah, like you yeah. got Blake and Slick. But yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. been it's been fun taking the various motifs of what it is to be a block, like the cancerous lumps, the Fred Flintstone uh, scavenged clothing, sure, the bone, yeah. the rope, and the uh, 
you know, they're definitely not dreadlocks hair. Um, they're yeah, not dreadlocks? No, because you can't put dreadlocks on. Right, it's cultural hair. appropriation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, it would I be think... appropriating. So right, understood. <clears throat> called I do. Knots. I like the um the motif you did with the bones and the uh, skins. You got really creative with those. I Can there's I... a thing. There's thank you very much. There's a thing I love doing, which is I I can't design a character. I have to design like a race of character and like. You basically are designing your own tartan paint. So you make a bunch, you're like, oh, I could rejig all of these elements t- to make this character. And then you make like 50 characters that kind of like have the same theme, but then um, all look different. Like this guy. <laughs> Why is he even wearing a bone as a necklace? What's the significance of the bone? In fact, he shouldn't have string on this bottom half. So I need to remove that. Yeah, what were you thinking, Jake? I know. If he had string on the bottom half, it should like go around down his sides. He does have a Hitler mustache, way. though. That's a nose ring. That's I kind of uh, bold for you to go with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Hitler stash. I it's, now you said that. I do need now to have a block that does have a Hitler stash, and he has an argument about with all the other blocks about why I, he's chosen to have. That I think stash. the Hitler stash is that. coming back. <laughs> The stigma can't last forever. Yeah, he's bringing it back. There was a comedian in the UK about five or ten years ago that tried to bring it back. <laughs> How did that go? It didn't last. Did he, yeah, he wore uh, it on a few. He wore it on a few panel shows that uh, every single British comedian ends up on nowadays because it's the only thing that England. Well, can remember make Jordan? Michael shows. Jordan had that for a little bit, and no one. No one gave because he's Jordan. Yeah. Oh and yeah, also, you're right. He he did the Charlie Chaplin thing. Yeah, I think if you're black, you probably get away with not looking like Hitler. Well, with Jordan, you know, it was because he got sponsored by milk, so he had to have something on his lip to catch the milk for the ad. So they what? said, "Well, you need to get a stash." Part of the deal. It's in the you're contract. Making that up. He's like, "All right, Hitler stash it is." Lies, all lies. But um, <clears throat> like. Dan Plagle is a famous booby artist, and he has his signature style of, uh, you know, massive dinner plate nipples. So I yeah. kind of wanted to, I kind of wanted to claim the super squish as my uh, boob design of choice. I think on Twist you can see it. She's got it. Some people have asked when I've showed them the designs. They've asked like, do they have four boobs? Just because they get so squished, and it's like no. It's just two boobs. They're yeah, it's yeah. Squished. They're very malleable, you know. <clears throat> Anyone that's actually handled breasts would know that. Yeah. Yes, especially breasts uh, of a woman who who go, who's up there in years. Uh, the up in years. You're talking about old lady. These are old the, ladies. The squishier. The yeah. It, there's a kind of a correlation of with squ- squish and age. I don't know if that's a brag or it, not. Yeah. I don't think I have anything. Are to you brag fl- about. That's a weird flex, Jake. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> those are very nice squishing boobs. old lady boobs <clears throat> i mean what what would i know but those are nice boobs. i like how you Breasts. color them differently than like the boobs are lighter i should think that's really funny. Yeah, i really wanted to make a feature of them you yeah know? you sure did <clears throat> all right well that's awesome that's, man I'm that's because you know. those aren't boobs those are actually their nipples <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole boob is a nipple. That would be fucking great. Oh. There is something related to nipples with their race, but I'm not going to reveal it. Yeah, save some for the uh, the journey. The actual, the actual book. Yeah. Save if you, if you sprinkle salt on them, their nipples turn inside out and it covers their oh, whole body. Jesus Christ. Like, okay, I totally want to play with stuff like that because it's 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 funny when you hear Rainy and uh, Ali talking about world building on their show. And every time I do, I'm like, how can I make a ridiculous parody of any world building idea? I'll just make one really stupid fantasy race that has every convoluted, this would be so cool world building idea. Uh, but yeah, so. And you know, you... a way you could kind of spoof it is with the one character teaching like another character and the character just explaining everything. It'd be a lot of tell, don't show, but telling like a lot of ridiculous stuff about the world. People are enjoying this. Jake, I appreciate you showing this off. I put the link in the in the chat earlier, and all of our links are in the description. But if you guys want to sign up for Carnal, we'll be launching this year in October. I definitely do Co- so. October first, but yeah, I'll I might post more of the character. I don't know if it's bad to keep posting stuff 
I don't know if I should keep some stuff. Uh, well, stuff behind, like this, like character paywall, design but... stuff, is super fun to see. I enjoy that. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I, have, I think I have designs some... and stuff. Just don't you know post I... all your pages because that would be yeah. spoiler. I did. <clears throat> I posted the seedling characters. Uh huh. Um, let me see. I have my iPad right here. I actually changed like last week on the show. Where is the seedlings folder? Yeah, I showed the seedling queen, uh, and I actually like changed her a bit. The seedling. Can't really bring it up. She looks a bit like. Oh that yeah, now. yeah. Developed oh. the design a bit. So yeah, I'm like, ah, oh, it can make it look like she has, um, gloves and leggings. And there's the seedling guy. There's the shaman in the middle. He's my. He's with the mask, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's fucking awesome. He has like such a starring role. Uh, in fact, thinking... just make it all about him. New, new plot. He kind of is issue one in a way. He's kind of taking the role of the main character who gets pressured and motivated to do something. And Connell just the design of the whole thing is Connell comes in and ruins everything. You have a bunch of people who are taking everything super seriously, and then you have Connell who comes in and ruins. It. But yeah, look at her. She's got one giant. One giant seedling sprout in a hand. Um, and I, I, yeah, I like her weird leggings and a thick thigh. But there we go. People saying a little phallic, don't you think? What, all of them? It, uh, is, is, the, is everything in life not all? Can you not call everything phallic? Have you met yeah. Jay? Are you Things are either phallic or boobic. One or the other. Yes. Or cave, vag vaginic caves. Yeah. Can, or caves. Can we go? Convex or concave. Jake keeps saying shaman. 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 How, how do American how do Americans say it? Shaman. Shaman. I'd say shaman. Shaman. Yeah, shaman. 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 Alpha Flight. You remember shaman, shaman from Alpha shaman Flight, Jake? You. You're a big comic, uh Marvel Comics buff, right? The hell is Alpha Flight? That sounds like some nineties three D CGI TV show. I don't think any of us are big Marvel Comics, but... Oh, my God. All right, well, in uh, Marvel Comics, there's a Canadian superhero team called the Alpha Flight. And, uh, and they, they had really tussles cool. with Wolverine. One of the characters was not a racist character, right? His name was Shaman, and he is this Indian man from Canada. Just because he's Indian doesn't mean he's racist. He's racial. I, mean, I said he wasn't racist. Racist? Yeah, his name's not racist. Shaman, he has this magical pouch with magical beans in it, and uh, <laughs> they sprout uh, magical things. What? Just any That's magical very thing? Vague. Yeah, what does specifically he, does he sprout? Like roots. Very and wide stuff range of. And, what? So plants. Yeah, plant. He's a Is he's a magical Indian. Okay. Can he can he sprout like a ten thousand foot high beanstalk and summon a giant? I feel like he'd get immediately canceled, or this character oh. will be immediately canceled today. Look at him. He was in the X Men animated series. <clears throat> hey, bud. I like it. I like shamans. Yeah, shamans cool. In case that's there not obvious. Go. Cool. What is a shaman? I've added, I've called this seed guy a shaman, and in general, I just imagine he's channeling magic from nature. I don't actually know what a sh shaman is, and you love shamans. I'm just, I'm just paying them lip service. You're actually serious about it. They're just like voodoo Indians, right? They're, They're witch the doctors, tribal... but Native American witch doctor. I don't know. Not just Native American. Most cultures, most tribal cultures have it. It's just a tribal spiritual leader. It's pretty universal. Ooh, a oh, medicine man. There we go. That's 80 doesn't, shit. Doesn't necessarily need to be medicine, though. Usually, it's this. It's, there's a lot of crossover with a healer role. It's more mm -hmm. spiritual, though. At least that's my understanding. Can that's they perfect. do? Can they do magic that like controls how things look? Can they do? They could do. There isn't a solid definition like because it's very. Uh, it's multicultural huh, in a not insane way. Yeah, someone said X Men had two Indians. They had more than two. Well, I guess if you're counting Shaman as an Indian, but they had uh, Danny Moonstar, who's the girl, and then they Thunder, what's the fuck? Thunderbird, and then Warpath, who's another Indian. But I well, you you know what's cool about the Shaman Seedling guy? Forge? He made me realize I've actually made a whole new language for my book, which is no one has ever done before. So oh, really? Is this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like check it out. So. 
you see here, he says Bala, and then Bala is like translated to like a really long sentence. And then he's oh god, it's not focusing. But yeah, he but says great, Bala, Jake. And then yeah, and I already like, learned your language in just seeing that panel for the first time for two seconds. I can speak a bala bing bong bala 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 bing bong. Well, you see, there's languages in real life that it's it's all about the the way you say a word. Like a lot of words can sound the same. Bala bing bong bing bong bing bing. Exactly. You can say an entire sentence with bing 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 bing, and the kind of the area of linguistics we'd use for sarcasm. Can we use the other? Oh, hello. Is that your bed? No, this is a futon. In America, we have these things called futons. They're like sofas that turn into beds. Mm-hmm. I think most countries have those. I had one of those ones that was covered in fleas. That's, That's gross. I My moved dog. into a place, and apparently they had a cat living on it for a while. And I was like, what the fuck? Ew. All right. Well, that was uh, a great update from Jake. How about you, Irene? Did you accomplish anything this week? Win any game shows? I guess I did, even though I'm still not sure if I did. Um, <laughs> I'm confused, too. <laughs> I'm very confused. Uh, so I just now, which is why I was late, came from Anthony Dargiv's channel. Um, he has a new show called, what the fuck is it? Cockfight something? Indie, Indie Comics? Cockfight. Indie Cockfight. Cockfight. So, yeah, it's fun. People challenge each other, and Diller challenged me, and I did not know what I was walking what I was walking into, but it was it was a good it was a good fight. It was a good fight. Anthony said I won, but I really do think it was a draw. It was, it was very he kept close, the poll so. he kept the poll open as long as possible to see that <laughs> creep up from a thirty a, from a, a a very clear majority of a winner after the five minutes he stated from the beginning, that was riding out. Until it became 50 oh, 50. It's fine. I will not be salty about such small things. Fair is fair. I think it's a draw. It was a draw at the end. Even though apparently Bancroft voted for Dillard. Uh, I, I thought we were friends, Bancroft, but it was a good drawing from Dillard. And I think I did okay as well. So that's cool. Everybody go check out Anthony's new show. And also, I. I've been doing a lot of stuff on Fiendish that I can't show, but I'm wondering, should I show what I've been doing for the website? What do you guys think? Nah. No? Nah? I'm joking. I'm yeah. joking. I'm joking. It's a yeah. Well, it's what you've been working on this week, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to spoil too much, but um, I have a new version of the website coming, and I guess I'll just show it. I will reward everybody who's watching this. I don't know how exciting this is, but uh, here you go. It's certainly not as exciting as boobs, blork boobs, but boobs. You know. Well, after that, you can show your winning drawing. Cam says so. You could uh, after after we look at the site, we could see. That. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Cam did win it because it was an auction. So thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I will show a preview. Uh, it would let me. Dun, dun, dun. I have a new cover. By the way, all Fiendish 2.5 books are off to print. And this cover, I posted it on the website. This is just one tiny part of it. But this is the permanent cover for chapter 2.5. And I'm not going to show the whole thing, but I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's pretty fucking badass. I really like it. I think you guys are going to love it. And if you were a site subscriber, you would be able to see the whole thing because I have memberships and stuff on the Fiendish website. Little what? did people know. Yeah, I do. I do. Wait a second. What's that even mean? I have... Here we go. Let me share. Dun, dun, dun. Um, I got to do my my show, and I'll be back. What? See you guys in an hour. <laughs> See ya. Bye, Narwhal. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Can you share my screen, please? Goodbye, Narwhal. Can you share yes. my screen, please? You should have asked him how his week went first, Phil, instead of wasting all that time on my stupid boobs. <laughs> I thought I did ask him. He, <laughs> well, he ignored he you and then left. <laughs> oh, it's all good. He'll be back. He'll be back. 
because we stream for like five hours anyways. Uh, but yeah, this is what I've been working on all Not week. Not on Phil's and... nights, we don't. <laughs> Not on my night. <laughs> I'm very confused. Oh, no. All right, Lost website. Over. Yeah, this is not live yet, but in Wix. This, yes, this Wix, awesome. That's what I use to make my website. But um, this is just. I also have a new a new category called asses on your main menu. It is asses. Ass passes. Passes. Asses. Mm. Ass. I should call it ass pass. I would probably sell more if it's if I said ass passes. But no, there. This is something I've had. On the website for a long time you can it was called subscriptions before but i thought that would be confusing with youtube subscriptions and then you can also become a site member which you can become a site member because my website is really really fancy you can have a you can just sign up for free you don't have to pay to become a member but if you want to support the comic <clears throat> look at this look at this so this is magic dun 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 <gasps> You can get a monthly pass for extra content because when I'm working on the comment, I fell off the wagon for like a few months. But now that I'm working on chapter three, I'll be posting in the blog more. You get extra content and behind the scenes stuff in the blog. So you can support the comic at any tier. More importantly, check this out. Um, I figured out a way to build an online reader for the comic. So... The online digital readers will go up after all the books are fulfilled, a long time after. I'm thinking of just putting up chapter one first because yeah. I want to make sure everybody gets their books and reads them. And chapter one's been out for like three years, two or three years at this point. So like, I'm sure everybody has it. So I'm going to wait a while before putting up chapter two, but eventually I'll have all the Fiendish chapters on the website, but it's only on the website. It's not a PDF. I have like a nice fancy reader and everything set up. That's awesome. And I think that's, yeah, I think it's, it's, um, cause I'm worried about digital content and using PDFs. Just, I mean, I don't know who would be priority my stuff. I'm, I'm not famous or anything, but I'm still worried about it. I want to, uh, I want to just be safe as safe nope. as possible. So I built a whole online reader that's just on the website. And if you buy one of these passes, it'll be permanent. So this will be live soon. I'm really proud of it. It's, That's uh, it's really awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's kind of like a built-in, I guess, like Patreon. Even those little things kind of remind me of that. And somewhere mm -hmm. you can get some extra content. And that built-in reader thing is cool. Uh, Marami wants to know animated page turns. That's what everybody wants to know. No, I God don't. Damn. I failed you. But I can show you chapter one here. I hope I can actually go through that here. So you go through the previews page, and uh -huh. then you'll have two buttons. Like you can buy the physical book or read the book online. And if you click through there, and I, I, I mean, I'm the site owner, but if if you're a member, it'll just, it'll have you, there'll be like a page where you have to, you know, get the subscription and then you'll just have this reader and it's all built in and you can read the comic oh, here that's like this. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all online because um, I don't I want to I don't want to do the whole PDF thing that's too hard to manage and it's permanent access. So if you pay once, twelve bucks, and you can always access it on the website. And yeah, I'm really proud of this. This will be live really soon. Um, I also have been trying to get feedback and smooth some things out because I feel like this is a big change. But I tried putting up some stuff on webtoons and some other web comic sites because I want to expand. The audience and i feel like the next step for a lot of crowdfunded books is let's try to get a generalized a general audience and the more people that are a fan of your book the more the crowdfunded books are worth mm -hmm. of course the crowdfunding comes first and that's a premium product but i want to try to find more people to read fiendish and if there's like a larger fan base that's good for the core supporters but uh guess what the web webtoons took down chapter one of Fiendish because they're like, oh, there's nudity. There's no fucking nudity. I blacked out the nudity that was in the original comment because there was like yeah. some boobage in like the second or third page. I blacked it out and they still took it down. So fuck that. Fuck webtoons. I'm going to have the comic on my own goddamn website. I can put whatever the fuck I want on there. So check out fiendishcomic.com. Mm -hmm. This is going to be live soon. Thank you very much. I guess I'm <laughs> never going to webtoons. <laughs> no, there are so fucking that I had the whole thing blacked out. It was just like a giant black bar. So they're sensitive and it's, stupid. Whatever. It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I, I digital comics. It's like it, it hasn't 
no one's cracked it yet, I guess. I've I've always wanted to take digital comics to Steam as a platform, and if yeah. where you have kind of like an app uh, that people can get through Steam, which is usually for games, and then you can have a digital experience there that's not just a reader, like it has music and like a, a bunch of kind of gamified options that you can be cool but like that would be a whole other audience and there's no content there's no like oh take out the boobs no like steam's bu- 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 to to parody a much loved friend bu- 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 based like they have freaking hentai games on there now you would know uh dj says when you focus irene you have very serious eyes and it's kind of frightening do i pierce through the soul <laughs> yeah so no the website looks awesome i've been aware. trying to, to upgrade our website um for stuff so hopefully we'll do that soon but yeah this looks super kick-ass Thank and i, I want to do similar things with like having the flip through of maybe some free uh stories and stuff on there too so mm-hmm. you can get like a flip book but it's i don't know the ones i found weren't good enough i would rather have something that functions all the time yeah, because sure. having a page flip is like a fancy extra code to add on and it it might malfunction so i just want to make sure it works over functionality is more important than being fancy so yeah definitely yeah. no See, being able want- to being able to pay for the digital version and just go be able to go to your website and read it is awesome no, mm-hmm. no fucking around with PDFs. Yes. No, no, and I'm, I'm never taking. I mean, it's a ten book series, so this will be up forever. But uh, I don't plan on ever taking this down, so you can access it whenever. Look at so, us. Yeah. Look at the three of us. Yeah. Oh. Well, the good Another looking credit block. It's what the second nice one. Jesus I've got. <laughs> Fine, I'll put it away. God damn. Well, I guess it's orange than, um, juice and oh, vodka really? because I need to drink tonight. It's better than Monster, I guess, Jake. Wait, what is with the vodka? Is that vodka and orange juice? juice. Orange oh, juice. orange. It's what they call a screwdriver over here in the States. Jake. Phil, what is the drink called where it's white rum and pineapple juice? White rum? That's my favorite. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what it's called, though, so I can never ask for it. I'm not sure. I don't know. Just say that, I guess. Does anybody know? There's probably some lush in the chat that knows. Just go to the bar and ask for Jake. Lush is for wine, isn't it? Huh? Huh? I just call everybody that. Uh, Racist rum, they call it. Oh, uh, they call it gay. (laughs) It's not fully gay. I'm going to look it up so I can beetle you guys. Uh, Drinking. Yeah, see screwdriver. Everybody knew the screwdriver. I tie. Uh... Yeah, I'm not really sure. I do like the t- the pina colada flavor, you know, without the alcohol. It's a little too sweet for me usually. Pineapple, so I like coconut. orange juice. I should really uh, like coconut is good, but I like either screwdrivers or whatever coconut with vodka is called. I don't know. Here you go, Jake. It's called a penis colada. <laughs> yeah, I love <laughs> penis coladas. <laughs> Jake likes penises, everybody. I mean, penises. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, one what's penis up, a lot what's up, Angela? Got Angela in the chat guys we got 107 people watching on all platforms we're even on rumble let's see we got three people watching on rumble thank you guys for tuning in uh yeah. we're almost to the topic of the show here but, but no one has asked Phil how his week has gone oh, how was your asking. week Phil <laughs> how, was how are you doing buddy Phil I didn't think anybody was going to ask well this week I guess this is the, the proper layout here uh, this week Monday morning we went to Prince and in production yes. and this is crazy because uh, this book, Lost Pages 3, we have the proofs here. We added an extra page in a week just to wrap all the, the theme up. Yo, we got shouts to Deer Man in the chat. Oh, Deer Man, I'm going to talk about your art tomorrow on the Diaz Brothers show because he did some pretty badass already posted. But um, the proofs were in. They came in. We proofread it, uh, had some proofreaders slash editors read it, and got feedback. We added an extra page. 
to wrap it up. So now it's not only 82 pages of story, it's 83 pages of story. Everything fit together. I didn't have to add two pages like you normally would because we do these um, we do these spacer uh, pages in here as well. So it worked out perfectly. Um, we added a barcode to the back, so we're like professional now. So it's super cool. And not only did we print the Dan Dahl covers and the Simon Bisley covers, which I don't have with me uh, right now, but we printed uh, a hand, well, probably I think it's 25 copies of Simon Bisley covers in the UK that are going to be shipped to Simon. He's going to sign them for all you amazing backers, including you, Jake. I know what you backed. Hey, buddy. Uh, that backed the Simon Bisley signed copy, and then they're going to collect them and send them over to the US, which is freaking amazing. Uh, we did that on our first lost pages campaign as well super cool and wasn't really outrageously priced for shipping and plus it's you know it's only under 30 copies so it's not a well, super all they happy. have to do is like carry it next door in right London, so i was talking to the mixum guys and they're uh based in the uk the people that own the company and run it and whenever i deal with them i'll call up like really late my time because they're up basically uh in the morning to, to deal with phone calls and they're like oh yeah it's like seven bucks for us to ship anything to anywhere in the uk because the uk is so small so i'm like that's cool so the shipping to him was like nothing and it's like 70 bucks for them to ship it to me over here shipping in the uk is so fucking amazing amazon prime delivery is next day sometimes yeah. it's same day yeah. You can order something it's in the morning. Here. You know oh, it's okay. same here, right? Yeah, but it, it's every time I've tried to buy something for <laughs> someone in the US, it's been like, oh, it'll take like two days. Well, but there's here. probably like in imagine in the UK, there's probably like two Amazon uh <laughs> warehouses where in here there's Loved. like three in every state or more. And they that's how they are able to run that over here. But yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, we have pretty good Amazon server. It's probably because you're ordering through like Amazon UK or some shit. So it's, no, no, no. Yeah. I, I make an. I have an Amazon. I go to Amazon.com when I buy stuff for my US friends as gifts, and I even have, uh, go to Amazon.jp to buy art supplies because over here, art supplies are considered a luxury. So they're marked up out the wazoo. They're ridiculously priced. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. So I can all of, I've got shit tons of like Delita <laughs> manga paper shit uh, ready to draw Connell with. Yeah. And I bought it all from because it was it was cheaper to buy it from Japan and pay the shipping than it was to buy it off buy it in the UK. Like mar notably cheaper. So I just bought tons of it and I've got it over there. Hey, if you want art supplies, you can order it and have it sent to me, and I'll just hand it to you when you fly to the States. I literally, I asked, remember that time? I was like, hey, Irene, could I buy 50 of this pen I like? Yeah. And, and, and you yeah, can no, I, it for me? Yeah, no, I will offer that for my friends. Also, I go to Asia okay. pretty much every year, so anybody want art supplies? Hi. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm so next yeah. time they have next a stuff in Asia that they don't even make over here, right? Yeah, every time I go, I stash up on pens like a crack addict. Like the fucking like, look at I have my bottle of pens here. Like I got most of these last time I was in Taiwan. Shit's so cheap. It's amazing. Yeah, I have a tub of the exact loads of the exact same pen. <laughs> so but no, just... yeah, I have another bottle of pens over here. I just bottles and bottles of pens. My God, oh my look! <gasps> oh so, my God. Phil what doesn't even draw, and he's got a, a bottle of pens. I know. Amazing. We do sometimes. That's, yeah. Dedication. This is actually a Wizard draw. World Wizard World Comic Con cup from years ago. I'm sure some people in the chat have those. But Wizard World's dead now. But yeah, so these are... I uh, just wanted to show you some badass pages. I actually... Uh, these are like in-book chapter break pages, like pinups. But I changed them. I put like cover dressing, so it looks like a cover on it the names down here just like little faux covers but maybe we'll actually use them as covers down the line if i ever uh chop this up into floppies one day so that'd be cool but yeah everything's rolling in fact we even for people in the chat that backed the campaign you guys may have gotten the the people ash can 
Now the people ash can number two is totally done. The last things we had to do on it were add the tones. So Dan went back in and digitally toned the whole book and it's freaking awesome. And I can't wait to have this printed because this is going to be printed locally. The turnaround time should be really quick. There's a printer down the block from me basically that does all of our ash can work. They do our bookmarks and what else do they do? Uh, oh, uh, the playing cards. We, so we have, we still have to get the bookmarks, ash cans, uh, the Kenneth Roquefort playing cards done, and those will be turned around very quickly. So everything's rocking and rolling. If you guys have not uh, backed yet, uh, go check it out in the description. And if you have backed, make sure your addresses are updated so we can get these out in a timely manner. Me badass. Look at that. Awesome. That awesome. was amazing. Freaking jacked. Yeah. Is amazing. there any sure special con is there any special consideration you have to do when you're adding tones? I don't know. I, I just let Dan do it all. Uh so I don't think so. But you know, it's very much a whole other passover because he's adding contrast to everything, you know, in the background and even adding some to the muscle definition on the characters. Really, really cool. And I think he does this really interesting thing because he sent it back to me all in layers. So there's a bunch of layers on these pages and where the silhouette is in here, he adds like a, a paper texture. So the black has texture to it. It's really, really, really cool. That is attention to detail. I like the... Uh... Tip of the bat, it's like the panel up. There's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of consideration on that tip. Yeah, it's freaking sweet. Not his head, <laughs> the tip. Of the, it's <laughs> the shiny tip. <laughs> I like that the panel bordering, the bo whatever that's a term, the panel breaking, but also the layouts and stuff. That's really dynamic. Yeah, this is a double okay. page. So actually, I could do nice. this, right? That would work. Awesome. Oh, yeah. That'd be sick. Yeah, yeah, so that's what I've been doing all week and a bunch of work stuff as well, but that's boring. So I guess that's the end of the show, guys. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Wait, it's been great. I have an Akira piece. Just hold on. So I did yeah. another... I did two draw streams this week. Holy shit. I'm just, like, socializing and shit. It's weird. Um, Here, I did an Akira thing on... I was streaming with Jason Krager and Perdomo. Oh, it's Akira. Shit. It's Akira. Uh, Tetsuo. Look at that. Akira. Akira. I Say finished it because right. I didn't finish it on the stream, but here you go. It's done. And there's his girlfriend's leg in the corner. There you go. <laughs> I guess I'll have this at my next Red, Red Valkyrie auction. That's, uh, oh, auction. that's disgusting. Auction. Thank you. I tried. <laughs> Have you seen the movie? It's pretty disgusting in general. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of weird. Um, people wanted to see your uh, cyber frog. Was it Vampirella, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe. Okay. What's up? Bob? So, I would have come up with a better composition <laughs> if <laughs> we knew Vampirella was going to be part of the composition, but Anthony That's decided part of the challenge. So he yes. so run it down for me because I missed the start. He added things on later or what? Yes. So it was everything was on a wheel. So he had a bunch of characters on a wheel and he spun it and it landed on Cyber Frog. And then he did another wheel that was like the character all a bunch of actions. So uh -huh. it was the character doing something like mowing the lawn, eating a cookie, fucking baking bread. I don't fucking know what the other ones were, but uh -huh. it landed on Cyber Frog mowing the lawn so that was like what we were drawing for 30 minutes or so and then after 30 minutes he spun another wheel and was like it were a bunch of options like you lose 30 minutes or you have to stop drawing for a minute or you have to draw with your offhand and then one of the other options was add on a third character and then he spun another wheel oh, oh no add on a second character and then he wow. spun a wheel again and it was vampirella so Halfway through the drawing, we had to add on another character. So, That's hey, cool. if you I guys like haven't seen, if you want to see a drawing challenge, this is it. That it was a, a well challenge. I will, I will give it to Anthony. That was very well designed. That was a hell of a challenge. I did I did what I can. Um, Dillard did amazingly as well. 
uh, it was a good fight. It was lovely. This is what I came up with. Great, yeah, these great are, these are rolling mowers. Oh, there's the mower. Yeah, that's cool. Y yeah, Very they're cool. rolling mowers because I was like, I'm just gonna keep it real simple. And I do have some lawn in here in the background. <laughs> I like, no, I, I, like I, so I, I like his bender <laughs> legs. I like his, <laughs> his, his bender leg. That's his so legs cool. do look like that. His legs do actually look like that. No, no, no. But but because uh, she's in front of his leg, it makes his leg look like a tube. So it looks like. Oh, yeah. Leg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen. I I did what I can. Okay. I was like dynamic. I have to make it dynamic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so. We got Robert. Robert Fraga in the chat. What's up, brother? Long time no see. I already. I already have the best cyber frog drawing in my possession. What is? Oh my god. <laughs> Wow. Disgusting. Amazing. On hand, right next to my desk as well. Uh, was it in the bin? <laughs> was it on the floor? Have you been walking over it all week? No. Try to place. Look, it was right next to Jake. It was just within arm's reach. So he gazed. I just it, whipped like, it out. I could just. I could just whip he it out. Could. He could just whip out that schlong all the time. That's what he likes to do. <laughs> I've, so the Love funny thing is, at metallic schlongs. I had it in my room for a, a kind of a while, and there's been a couple of women who have come through the place whilst that's been in the bedroom. I'm none of them have ever pointed it out. No, 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 no one has do. ever pointed out the giant fucking dick drawer, <laughs> the giant cyber dick. No one's pointed it out. I'm kind of surprised at this point, but you know. You should just put it right in front of the door and just <laughs> should challenge it, I should just the put it on that The one that finally pillow. pointed out will be the one. You should just put it on the fucking pillow and be like, so, yeah. you know, if you noticed, are you in the mood now? <laughs> well, it'd be like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Oh, Jake, Mary. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, whoa. Steady. It'll be the, it'll be the right one. Oh, before we get into the uh, topic, I did want to do an, another <laughs> shout out. An hour in. <laughs> Gonna get there eventually. This topic's going to be real hour. short, okay? <laughs> Wait, did you prepare a show at all? No, 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 yeah, we're live. I made Anthony redirect to our show. And yeah, all I those people stuck hour. around as well. Yeah, we I got, hope you uh, have a fucking presentation. 118. We got over 60 people in the chat right now on YouTube. Um, you haven't gotten to the topic? No, not yet. We're building up to it. This is it's building anticipation, and uh, <laughs> it uh, it definitely <laughs> indicates a, a huge amount of confidence that Phil has in his topic. Yeah, but not yeah. only that, Hold also up. his confidence in his co-hosts to be able to make interesting conversation despite how much he prepared yeah. i know why don't you have faith in us and i'll remind you also like last time it was on my channel i did a whole entire like six drawings and a presentation when i said i wouldn't so yeah, shame on you us, yeah be, be more of a tryhard overachievers Bill. exactly no one likes an overachiever irene i yeah, do good, <laughs> lisa simpson over here yeah <laughs> So I don't care. Attention. So before don't we get hate. into that, we have, I want to shout out Adam Miller. We've had him on uh, the Diaz Brothers show to talk about his awesome campaign on my comic, the uh, Iron Aged Icons trading card pack. There's one open spot, guys, and you open. all could vote for who's going to be that spot. If you guys haven't seen the campaign, he has these kick-ass trading cards uh, they come in the, the freaking trading card wrapper. You can even get a box full of 14 of them. The, uh, if you get the regular box, just look at the campaign. It's this super custom-made box with all the, the pictures of the characters in it. Let me open up the campaign here because you guys uh, you guys want to see. Uh, super awesome digitally painted characters from some of your favorite creators. There's a Magic Cop one in here. There are... So I think there's 40 in the 40s. There's over 40 of them. But uh, he has one spot that you guys could vote on. So the way you could vote is if you back the campaign, you'll see an update on the campaign for you backers that you can then go in and vote for your favorite character out of the lot that he has. And it's kind of like a tournament thing. So... I think you're voting for a handful at a time until the top two 
go up against each other, and that's the one he's going to add to the training card pack. So go over there, back it. Uh, Alex VRB is dropping the link in the chat. I appreciate it. And if you guys have been around here for a long time, been around CG, been around all of these awesome indie comics, then you're going to know these characters and you're going to need them. So go check that out. Super cool. It's kind of like what we tried to do with uh, CG Vacation. Mm -hmm. so I'm still kicking myself that I didn't get any mockations done in Tampa. I was like, nah, it's okay. No, do someone else's. It's fine. And then I have like three copies with nothing drawn you in it. You got three copies? <laughs> yep. More signatures? To the heroes. I I'm will. to get I will. everybody to go to Heroes. I don't know who's going to be there, but... When is that happening? Because I said I'd go. Father's Day weekend. It's really easy to remember. Where is it? Heroes Con? Charlotte. Charlotte, yeah. Oh, yeah, Charlotte, yeah. Wait, that's in two... That's like in two months' time. Yeah, you better get organized, bro. Fucked up, Jake. Shit. <laughs> okay. Um, I said I'd come. Yeah. All right, topic <laughs> time, guys. If you guys <gasps> didn't know, we talk oh about my making God. comic here. All right, we're an hour in, and uh, I think this topic will give us about ten minutes of uh, conversation. <laughs> but Bill, you you do not trust in our ability to spend gold out of copper on this. You could give us anything. All right, all right. I know. We trust would, your friends. We could make a conversation out of it. All right. So the title of the stream is "Writing Behind the Mask." Yeah. All right. It's not tough. And what do you think of the title, Jake? You have an issue with the title? So you you talking about writing the character Stanley Ipkiss? No, no, specifically. No, 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 no. I Do you mean okay? I'm gonna guess you. what you mean by the title because yeah. you didn't tell us what the presentation was gonna be or the discussion was gonna be about. Um, I would, I think, when you say the writing behind a mask, I would think of um because every character has a. It's like how we talk about on the show: a character has a want and a need, and mm -hmm. it's similar to that. Where I think the mask means the characters want on the surface like the surface level of what they outwardly want but if you if a character is three-dimensional then inwardly there will be something that they need to achieve but they don't even know and that's usually tied to their character flaw so they want to achieve vengeance but they actually need to fix their own daddy issues or some shit like that and that's how you write a that's like a really good shorthand for writing a believable character with challenges and there's a lot you can play with but anyways that's what i think of when you mentioned writing behind the mask it's not it, it's not it. <laughs> well we all wear masks metaphorically speaking which is but, a line from the mask. you don't have to be that dramatic about it i'm just giving my fucking opinion jake masks, metaphorically speaking. um yeah i mean yeah sure irene <laughs> no phil did mention to me and novel before the show started what it was so it's kind of funny <laughs> it's completely different no, um, well, then it's completely but, different what, but that, I, no, I no 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 but the, the needs and wants thing as well i think that's good but the needs and wants is how to make an actual character and mm -hmm. phil wants to talk about making the person that is behind the actual costume whereas like modern okay. the, the modern take is like oh this is just like a costume a mantle you can pass it on from character to character and it's like no 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 no. there's actually a peter parker behind that spider-man mask and that's who <laughs> people actually give a shit about they don't right give a shit about the the kind of like tin of paint you can paint on everything but you can including you can a t-rex you could uh, wrap uh, irene's statement into that as well like that is mm -hmm. you know the the want and need thing is definitely applicable to the person behind the mask of the character you know and spider-man's a great example and obviously popped into my head because of the the quote that i said last week where you know the what makes a, a great superhero character is the person behind the mask and who they love and who loves them and what they care about and who what their what is in their heart and that's why peter parker is such a gripping character peter parker makes spider-man right that's why spider-man is such a great character is because peter made that character uh 
You're about to be canceled by all of Twitter for saying Peter Parker <laughs> makes Spider-Man. Peter Parker is there Spider-Man. You. Oh uh, no, he's my yeah. Spider-Man. But th- you know that's <laughs> like... not my Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's that's great. And that's very pertinent, especially because now everything is being changed and everything is a mantle. So cool. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's mantle characters and stuff like that, and that that's cool. But you have to have these persons behind the mantle be different and be compelling on their own, right? Well, you know, there's so many different spawns, you know, but each perfect, of them need to be compelling. Perfect encapsulation of that idea literally is the mask. Like, yeah. uh, that is a mantle. It's a literal mask that gets passed around from person to person, and it exaggerates who they are as a person. So, like, even though it's kind of like a visual style, like, uh, you, you get to put the green mask on and have, like, slapstick cartoon comedy, but it, it, it's always an amplification of the character that's wearing it. Have you seen the mm-hmm. mask yet, Irene? No. Ah, uh, you should... Okay. Yeah, you even if you don't re- watch them, you should read the comics, because the comics are really fun, and they're different to I've the seen, movie. I've seen the scene where he's, like, the thing, the mask latches onto him it's a fun movie but yeah no it, it is a perfect example jake because what uh i guess how the character at, acts they call him a uh, big head in the comic how he, he acts is directly correlated to who the person is that's wearing it right it's an amplification of the id inside the person's mind and so everything they do is embellished depending on their personality so and it goes back to what I, irene was saying is the reason you know, we connect to these heroes or characters is because of what they desire as a human you know and that's how you're gonna connect the theme to the character and to your audience you know I always try to um you know try to really hammer home to our audience that theme is so important in storytelling and how your audience is, your reader is going to latch onto your story. And that's, I mean, that's why I went back and added that last page to this new book, the new Lost Pages book, because that's so important to try to make everything full circle and uh, have each character have a kind of different take on that theme. Um, Well, when you say theme, because we've discussed this a bunch of times, And, like, I don't think we've ever really been able to come to a conclusion on what theme is. And, like, I'm starting to think theme is just a certain feeling you want to put across rather than, like, a statement of, like, love always wins or be yourself. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like, so what do you mean when you say theme? Especially, you know, in relation to Lost Pages 3 where you added a whole page to tie the story more in with the theme. Right. Well, I... To me, and what I learned, um, there's a book called, what's it called? It's a comic writing book by Dirk Manning. Dirk Manning comic book. That's probably not going to be good <laughs> comic writing book because he's written a lot of comics. Yeah, it's called oh. Right or Wrong. And this book came out I know, probably like the mid-2000s. So there's like whole chapters on this is how you find an artist. You got to go to digital webbing and (laughs) go to this forum and find this guy. And that stuff's super obsolete now, but he talked about theme. And to me, it's kind of the, the idea you're trying to get across to the reader through this story. And it is what the reader connects with to remember the story you know, um, so depending on what story you're telling and what your characters are going through, uh, I think what makes a more interesting story is when characters in it have different views of the theme. So people could, their wants could con- conflict with the theme. Uh, and most of the time, your characters probably conflict with the theme, but in the end, should probably show it to be true yeah the implicit truth to your universe right and it's that's what i mean i'm trying to do through storytelling 
is find these universal truths and those things should probably uh hit home with your audience and try to uh, make them see the the truth of the world i think i don't think theme needs to be a statement as i saw i think bond mentioned it in in chat it doesn't need to be a statement but it's also different from motif because i think theme and motif get confused a lot oh, motif yeah. is a a recurring visual or divisal, like literary, whatever. It's a repeating literary or visual device within your story that carries through the theme. It's a it's a vehicle for the theme. It's not the same as theme. Theme doesn't need to be a statement. It doesn't need to be, say, uh, love heals all or something. But it could just be, I would, I think of at least as personally, I think of it as it presents a conflict. For example, it's, it's, um, I don't know, like vengeance versus forgiveness or something like that. At least that you don't have to state which one is right. It doesn't have to be some like morality tale, but what is your story? What are the conflicting ideologies in your story? And that is what carries through the theme. And I've been thinking about this a lot because when I write the point five chapters for Fiendish and any side quest, if I'm trying to add in something, Usually this is how it goes about, I'll think of something that plot-wise I need to add, like, information that I should show, but I can't just show the information because it would just be boring exposition. It needs to tie into the theme of the main story a bit, so I think about how do I exposit while tying in the character development and the world building in with a thematical, a story that thematically resonates with the main story and that boils down to well what are the main conflicts in the story and those opposing elements that should be what drives everything that you write hmm. no, yeah on. like i've i've kind of come to see the the appealing aspects of when you're watching something is kind of almost akin to pattern recognition and choosing a theme to tie everything in is like the one big meta pattern to the whole thing you know what I mean? Like a, a a hero and a villain. The hero has a certain view on an idea, and the villain has the opposite view on an idea. Like that is a pattern that can go through the whole piece, and people enjoy recognizing that pattern. Like all the structures we talk about in other shows, they're different patterns. Like mm -hmm. um, if a, a recipe for a genre, a recipe of of events and um, components to the story for a genre. Like that's another pattern. Like it's. It's kind of like the overall pattern to the whole piece is the theme. I I see it as, um, like in uh in Connell, the theme is literally like look, be yourself, learn to be yourself. So you would obviously have some characters that are like living it up, but maybe they're not actually actually connecting with who they are. Maybe they're trying to escape from who they are by sure. yeah. And then maybe you have people who are being reserved and hiding who they are to be you know in with society they're not being themselves like you can you can just use that one pattern and link so many different characters states of being to it and it creates like a meta pattern for the whole piece that i think people pick up on and they get frustrated when it's not there like they feel lost when it's not there like a theme right it's like this almost a like the tone of your story there's you know how certain i was just talking about this with eric weathers on um because we we're promoting on on my channel and how battle Book road like has like a color scheme and fiendish has this as well i have like a whole visual style for it the theme is that but in writing form in mm -hmm. the story structure and i was just thinking as you were talking jake about lord of the rings so Here's something that everybody knows and it, what is the central conflict of lord of the rings well people it's often said that the conflict is well good versus evil but what does that really mean because that's simplifying it's almost just a very that doesn't delve into what it actually is and i think in lord of the rings it's self good and evil are defined as selfishness versus selflessness and the characters that are selfish and want power are the ones that are the opposing force like they're the antagonists and the ones that are selfless and they give and they sacrifice and they do their best to sacrifice for others and they, they rise up to the challenge like frodo and they sacrifice to rise up to their destiny like aragorn they go on this journey and they even the 
all of those character journeys that are rewarded ties into selflessness and the character journeys that are punished tie into selfishness and even the um the the race that are being punished for going against an oath they are being punished because they were selfish and now they must atone for their selfless selfishness so think of theme in that way i think it can boil down usually to like an opposing force yeah that's kind of like june you have basically self-control versus lack of self-control right like you you have various point like almost tests of characters where he has to control his reaction to the pain where he's putting his hand in the box versus like that big fat Daglo white guy who's indulging all the time like isn't the central theme of the the dynamic in june about self-control and lack of hey, self-control? juno my dude oh, june. June. june don't you know june that's oh, how we say it too i've never seen it <laughs> Yeah, that is, um, it's similar to selfishness or selflessness, but it's not really like Dune is a very non-idealistic story, but you're correct. It's about controlling the mind and whether you can restrain yourself. That's what the whole Gam Jabbar test is, is are you human or not? Can you control your impulses? And that's what the whole story revolves around. Oh yeah, if you, if you, you aren't human if you can't control yourself and like you're almost worthy of just like death if you can't control yourself right if you're if you can't go you if you're doing this about the power of the mind and if your mind can't overcome your impulses then in the well that's the gom jabar test according to that the idea is you're not even human you're as good as an animal because you don't have a strong enough mind so the character behind the mask would be uh basically a shining example of what the implicit truth is to the story um, they would be a strong example of the theme, right? To tie it back into the topic, the film. Yes. yes. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> he's zoning out. He's zoning out. I was trying to team up, but I was like, wait a minute. How do you get this? <laughs> but, yeah, so the, the point I, I kind of wanted to make, too, because uh, a lot of comics that I'm reading – and a lot of modern comics kind of put the characterization like personality and the character behind the mask. They put that kind of on the bench in a lot of modern stories, I feel like, especially like modern superhero stories. They're not taking the time to focus on the person and don't really tell us as the reader their wants versus their needs. And that's something that I'm, I'm trying to put more into my work and to think about more, especially before I start writing stories. The pressures you know. that are under. Huh? Oh, yeah, the pressures and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. Because, I mean, all of those really small and minute moments that you can create in a story with a character all form a web to who this character is, makes them more complex and ultimately makes you uh, care for the character more as a reader, raises the stakes. You know, everything we talk about on this show, they're all building blocks, and you could put them all in so many different ways, but they all add to form more powerful moments and story and, and character. And I think uh, a lot of talk like this could be brushed aside by modern creators as being like oh that's you know boring to to read in a story or you know if you do if you spend too much time on this it's just going to be a wall of text and it's going to bog down the, the flow of the story and the reader is going to get bored and tired of things uh, but right now i'm reading through claremont's x-men and he's able to put pick his moments in like one to four panels on a page and then scene change. Uh, I feel like uh, creators from back in the day were really able to, to work things out uh, because they were doing stories that were like 24 to 26 pages every month. And it builds on top of uh, those moments, but it builds on top of each other. So like paying attention to that stuff and, and exactly what, Jake was saying earlier where he doesn't 
want to design on the page. You know, he takes the time to design beforehand. I think a lot of creators could learn from that, not only in the art departments with designing, but also character creation. You know, think of ahead of time who these okay. guys are and how you could really let their personality shine through their heroism and into it. I think I'm guilty of not doing that, which is why it takes so much iteration for me to get stuff I'm happy with. Because um, a lot of the times it's like you have a feeling for what a character is, and then you just create situations you throw them into. Then you kind of play out how they would behave, right? You kind of like like intuition, feeling, which is like the opposite, I think, of how you approach your characters, Irene. Because you pretty much make like star charts uh, about every single one and like plan them oh, yeah. down to the T. <laughs> and um, the thing is, like all that planning stuff uh, with the characters and putting them into personality categories, before I was like, ah, it's like a lot of work for nothing, just feel it out. But yeah, since reading some of those, pers those personality car categories and seeing how accurate they are, it's like, what the fuck, man? Maybe there's something to this. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense that on a evolutionary level, there would be different types of personalities and naturally evolve into society for humans to keep functioning as a whole. So um, I don't know. I don't. It's not something that I just. Oh, I believe in it, but it it helps me as a writer. That's why I like doing the MBTI stuff. It um it's a good basis to start a character on. But, of course, once the character starts speaking to you, then you don't need that anymore. Yeah, what do you think about this, Maromi? says, Project Bibbles. Oh, sorry, that's Bible. Project Bibles. Who are you talking There's to? A, there, would, uh, either you everyone, like, there would be a good and a bad version of doing that. Someone can get lost in the world building and make a lot of twaddle that's never actually relevant to their story. <laughs> Not, do you not use the word twaddle in the old U.S. of not a word? No, uh, it's a real word. Twaddle. We revolutionized that Bibbly word. Bibbly <laughs> yeah, but Bibbly Bobby. People go off and make it, but like there's the, the, there's the version of making a, pro a project Bible where people could just make that and never get the project off the ground and right. they never focus yeah. on a central story. They mm -hmm. just make a million different characters, like my character designs. I could design forever. I was on such a high, or I was on a pure freaking sugarish ADHD high, like designing 10 characters a day. Yeah. Uh, and someone could do that for a whole year and never make a story. Um, right, yeah. right. I mean, that's my kind of, I guess, fear of doing the Bible thing. But, you know, over the years, I feel like I have crafted a bunch of design documents and, and character backstory things. Like, I mean, I have a, a Google Drive document that just has a bunch of ideas. And I have ones for each of my characters and stuff. So I guess in a way, it's kind of like that. But it's not specifically like an organized thing that I sit down nightly to do. I, I feel like I would probably get lost in it, like you're saying. If you wanted to hand it off to another person so that they would also create oh. something, then mm -hmm. you'd have to. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. <laughs> Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, look at <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Let's do that thing. Yeah, ah, I mean that, that's awesome. Baby. Yeah, that's super cool. Look, look at look at this. Look at this. Ah, Guys, ah. half of it's half of it's empty. Oh, is it's it? almost it's crossing the halfway point now. Yeah, um, yeah. So when I yeah, met met it in thing. real life, I'm like, wait a minute, half of this is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a while. It's a little bit past the halfway point, but yeah, it's like this is my giant world building book for. It's but, mostly all with all fiendish stuff. Look, here's my world building basics. Oh, on the dude, that way. handwriting is insane. It's so crazy. Oh, but yeah, it's um, I like world building, so it is dangerous to get carried away with it. But I find personally, what really helps is having laying down your story first and kind of world building as necessary right and that's what i constrained myself because i yeah. love world building but i laid down the basics and there was definitely a lot of chaos at the beginning i think every story has that stage where you're tr trying to just figure out like whittle it down it's almost like you're finding the sculpture within the marble 
And once you find the tone and the themes and everything, make sure you have that before you get too carried away with the world building, because then that theme and what your story is about will be a guide. So I kind of build things as necessary as I go. For, for example, my language, I, I add words as necessary for like if I want to make a song or somebody asks me or if I have something come up in the book and it, it just naturally becomes a functioning thing. So there you go. But yeah. it's a it's a specific thing in say the animation industry that someone will make a project bible that everyone on the project would kind of get. Like if we were having to like if we had to hire a team of people, you would need to make a concise project bible. Yeah. to actually give to people and be like this is it would even contain the themes, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, and you'd have to be concise with it and it lets everyone stay on the same page, literally, if it's on a freaking page in a in a project bible. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Um, Vaughn did ask what issue I'm on. I'm on issue 108 right now. the The other thing I I wanted to talk about. Uh, here's a little X Men. Look at that uh, storm butt. Look at that ass. Storm you know, you you bringing up X Men on my show. I brought uh, the whole thing of pressure was apprehension of tension of, of consequences. And the entire time you were like apprehend as if wondering what that word even meant as if like it was a new word. Yeah. It kind of made me worry if I used the wrong word. No, I think you got it. Okay. I was like, should I use anticipation? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look at that ass. Maybe you no. should. No. Storm got a nice caboose. <laughs> Should yeah. be bigger. Yeah, I like that much. I really like cover designs that covers the title a little bit. So I think that yeah, was, me too. That's it's great. so classic. I love that stuff. But uh, so the other thing I wanted to talk about, and this I guess, I mean, kind of wraps into that as well. Uh, I was listening to, I think it was a commercial. There's like they're doing some new TV show on movies and. They're doing one on uh, Batman 89. They're talking about Tim Burton. And someone quoted Tim Burton, like Tim Burton's motto. And I thought this was awesome for a storytelling aspect because he's a you know very uh, stylized storyteller. He, I guess, goes by the motto of uh, humanize your monsters and monsterize your humans, which just that idea is really cool and you could see that in a lot of comic book storytelling um and even if you look at the x-men right the some of these characters and a lot of characters in the, in the x-men uh, mythos are total freaks you know you look at like someone like beast or specifically nightcrawler here who looks like a devil you know the the some of the characters i think wolverine calls him elf all the time he's got he literally has a a devil tail a pointy ears he's blue his face is always in uh shadow but he's a super humanized gentle character who is uh devoutly catholic and he's just an awesome soul and seeing that contrast jake that contrast makes an impact <laughs> Yes, that does tie in exactly to what I was Well said, Phil. Well, Thanks. yeah, when you mentioned this particular aspect of the topic, you know, I, I instantly got thoughts of, like, everyone trying to make sympathetic villains. But no, you're literally talking about a hero looking like a monster to create contrast. Are you talking about the personality? Because the personality of the character you described seems like a typical heroic, not con conflicted not weighed down by like the guilt of their past which is what i would interpret that tarantino quote to be right tim like, burton oh yeah tim burton tim burton well he's saying humanize your monsters so if you have a character that is monstrous i mean you can even apply this to um the Guillermo del toro the stuff he does like his characters are monster like he's like look at uh the shape of water right that character is a monster that uh basically um abe sapien ripoff character from hellboy um but very humanized and, and especially in the shape of water the antagonist is 
a regular human military officer who is just this monster on the inside. You know, he's a brutal human. He has no regard for life and he's just super militant. So that contrast of your hero being looking like a monster, but is very, very humanized. Uh, same thing with, I have, um, you know, Swamp Thing here, which is, you know, DC's awesome monster, who's, I would say, probably the most emo DC character is Swamp Thing. He's super gothy and emotional and very sad and very human, but he was once human and now he's lost that. So you're trying to you're trying to illustrate the idea that if you take uh, a, a kind of like a, a visual of a character that people would instantly see as like oh the fucking evil right and then right. if they show profound humanity it'll feel more profound because it's coming from someone you see as monstrous whereas if you have like a good guy character who's only supposed to be good like. A woman who works at a dog rescue, but then she secretly turns out to be like really not have not treating the dogs very well. Like because that person is presented initially as like, oh, she's a nice sweet lady, but then when they turn when they act monstrously, it's like it hits harder. Right. It slaps. To use the uh, vernacular of the present. It's like a betrayal of your innate trust that we've all evolved yeah yeah oh right? yeah you feel pissed off that you trusted the yeah. nice character but then That's you feel sad with yourself that Shame. you judge you the ashamed monster. of yourself for judging nightcrawler for being this evil thing or reacting this way this is perfectly illustrated in the animated pilot episode for x-men before they did the x-men animated series they did a one-shot pilot called uh, Pride of the X-Men, where Kitty Pride is introduced to the team and to the mansion. And her first reaction to Nightcrawler is she's freaked out by this thing and she's scared by him. And he isn't mad about it. You know, he understands. And in the end, he's the one that saves her life. And she's all sad, you know, sad that she treated him so poorly, you know? You know, um, <clears throat> Richard Cahill in the chat says it's left of subversion. This is the thing. What I think what Phil's trying to point out is different uh, to that idea because there's a modern idea of like make all your villains super sympath sympathetic. Is that different to sympathetic? Super. Uh, make them all sympathetic. <laughs> yeah, like every villain actually has a reason why they're a dick. So they're not actually a dick, right? Like they just had a bad time when they were younger, and now they just turned out like this. Oh God! I mean. That's the subversion. But I, I mean, I don't think it's a, a subversion. I think it's, I mean, classic storytelling. Well, this is different. R right. Yeah. I mean, look at a character like Hellboy. His, his whole thing is nature versus nurture. He's supposed to be this devil offspring that is going to bring about the end of the world. But he was raised in America by a loving father of science to uh, have the ideologies of America and he grew up to be this hero still has that inside of him like that kind of um, that calling to be evil but he's able to defeat it and he looks, it looks like a monster but you know that uh, struggle through um, being judged by how you how you look to become something, even you know mightier is a, a great theme you know not yet not only that with those kind of characters you can play with the uh very relatable idea of resistance of natural drives like novels mentioned on the show before about like relatable things like things the characters can go through that make you just instantly kind of like simp a thighs with them and <laughs> you know all of us at some point kind of like resist our natural drives to try and be a member of society instead of being a um, freak running around. Uh, and giant if you pet. have a yeah, a giant pest, if, <laughs> if you have a monster, you, you would kind of like you can play with their species having certain natural drives that they're trying to resist to fit in with society. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, the 
Now, th the name changes. It says X Men Evolution did Nightcrawler justice. Yeah, so that's when they were teenagers. And I remember specifically they had kind of like a story arc where um, Xavier gives him a watch where he could change how he looks, like a hologram watch. And he had that in the comics as well. Back, back uh, in the day here, actually, Tony Stark made it for him in the comics. But he had that struggle of being ashamed of how he looked, and he covers it up by making himself look like someone else, um, which is something really cool. I think they do that probably thematically with a bunch of different X-Men characters uh, throughout all of their media. So it's something I, I kind of like with the monster aspect. That's why I've always liked Swamp Thing because he strives to be what he once was and he never could get back to that point of being human, especially with his love of his life being so close to him and he can't have her because he's this monster. You know, and then you could play around with what people outside that relationship think. They did that in the Swamp Thing, uh, the Gotham City story, where Gotham arrests Abigail Arcane, Swamp Thing's uh, you know, girlfriend, for having relations with a monster. And they arrest her for that. Whoa. And then Swamp Thing gets super pissed off and overgrows Gotham with forests. And then the people of Gotham start uh, turning back into like naked hippies dancing around, kind of worshiping Swamp Yay! Thing. It's freaking crazy. And Batman <laughs> can't take him out. Oh, my dog's barking. Doggo. Hi, Doggo. What are you doing, Doggo? Have you revealed the, dog, the dog's oh. name? Yeah, I, I call him Bat. But his name's Dylan, because he looks like a Dylan. bat. He's got the bat ear going on right now. Bat ears. Like a bat wing of an ear. Yeah, he's very. Yeah. It's like a little mini Batman. I think we woke him up. Oh. You're making me want a dog again. Oh, I went through a phase yeah. of feeling like I wanted to get a dog. I was thinking this week about like, oh, imagine if you could get like a robot dog. And it was like, <laughs> and they never die. And they never die. But like That's, you would, which oh. you wouldn't really care about it. I kind of feel like because it'd be like it's just a simulation. It's not a real dog. Like when you look at a real dog, you're like, there is a real struggle going on within that creature. And I want to protect it and make sure it does okay. That's true. It would be hard because I want something to just love and care for. But pets don't live as long as humans. I can't deal with that. <laughs> I know it's kind hard. of rough, but he's yeah. uh, two years old, so he'll be around. Got a while. Yeah, he's Sometimes pretty awesome. they, they Aww, last he's a little baby. Quite a while. I feel like I might have read this. I read this part where this little midget thing starts beating the crap out of him. <laughs> oh, that's a great design. What the he hell comes, is that? Yeah, he's like the guardian of this crystal, and you think it's going to be like this big badass, but it's just this little freaking imp. Oh, that's awesome. I got to read it tonight. Hmm. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm just waiting until I get oh, so long. All the, these freaking comics are so long. 16 years of X-Men comics. Chris Claremont. That's why I don't know where to start. Well, I'm starting at I his run. That's the definitive. But it's it's funny because in a handful of uh, issues so far, they've like done some meta stuff where they put Stan Lee and Jack Kirby in the background and they'll have lines talking to each other. And it's breaking the fourth wall, being like, oh, when we wrote these comics, they were so better, so much better, or something like that. So they did like little nods to them. And then in, in one of them, they had the actually Chris Claremont and Dave Cockrum were in the issue, the artist and writer of the book. So, and it's weird. You probably don't see that. I am, I'm agonizing over the concept of fourth wall breaks in yeah. general. Because I love consistency in a piece of work. So it's like, if you're going to introduce them, you, it's like you should be throwing them in every now and then. But if the mm -hmm. rest of the time you're never going to mention them, and then like one time you had a, a weird fourth wall break in the story, it kind of mm -hmm. like cheapens the rest of it. That's like a conflict I've got going on and whether to allow myself. <clears throat> I don't to think that. you need it if. Because just having an omniscient narrator, I think, is a better device 
because it is very specific when a fourth wall breaks work and you almost need to have like an actual crazy character like Deadpool. So yeah. having like a, a disembodied narrator usually works better. Yeah, like to have a series that's like never fourth wall breaks and then something is happening and yeah. then one character is like, we're going to lose a lot of readers over this one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that would almost be a little, a little too much. I feel like in, in your book, you could do it because it's a comic. That's the thing; you have to be careful, or maybe you don't. Maybe I'm overthinking. Probably. I think. I mean, it would. You have a lot more leeway because humor always has more leeway. But you are building an immersive world, though. That's it's what not I mean. It's kind of like it, funny. so. Okay. I'll broach this topic. Let's say you're going to have your universe. And we all know the familiar concept of isekaiing, right? Phil, do you know what isekaiing is? Um, yes. It's been many yeah. memes. Too but weedy like, for you? No, 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 no. I'm saying if you have your universe and then you have a character who you hint it's just a character that got isekaied to your universe. Does that cheapen your universe because you then have like characters linked to does it does it creep too much into multiverse crap? Or is it if you do it subtly? I mean, what are you talking about? Uh, Gwenpool is such a well-written character that worked really well. <laughs> you should that doesn't cheapen a story at all. Did that happen in Gwenpool? Thing. Gwenpool yeah, got isekai into she, that world. Yeah, she's from our world or a world like ours and she was a fan of comics and she fell into the comics world. Hmm. Does she die and fall into it? Um, she... Well, yeah. How did she get into the Marvel Universe? I don't know. How I feel like it, it works. <laughs> I felt like it, it, it works the way, you, the way you explained it, Jake. Like, okay. if, if it if it's like kind of like it are you hint at it and then it could be a reveal later that could be something you hold on to where you're like oh if you're done with your main story and then just reveal that and then now you could tell his story from the previous world he was in you know it could be a, a new revitalization of the story yeah Maybe. you either you either decide to do it or don't and it definitely i do think it i've resisted it because i think it kind of like well have i but it, it's it's like if you're like, oh, you make a fantasy. Okay, Adventure Time did this well. Adventure Time was kind of like cartoony. It was. It is essentially a fantasy. But then from the very beginning, they have like unexploded nuclear missiles around in the background, like old tanks. Like they have old stuff that was from a modern world in that mm -hmm. world. So when they explored that across the series to be like, oh, Adventure Time is like a post-apocalyptic cartoon land do you not know this none of this aspect never seen it so, you've never watched adventure oh, okay great no. you've never you've never smoked salvia or watched adventure time phil <laughs> you spoiled everything no. oh. but the, they set it up from kind of the beginning by stuff they drop in the background so it works but like i yeah there's always like a, a tightrope walk of the reader being like this would be so cool Yo, and Adam, you we got Adam Lawson in the chat. What's up on X? Awesome, Adam. Lawson. What's up, brother? Anyways. Yeah. Well, essentially, if you have a fantasy world and then you're like, oh, this is just the past of this other IP that I have. Like, yeah. if this, and, you know what I mean? Like, if, and then you do, can linking the two worlds actually cheapen both of them at the same mm -hmm. time? You know what I mean? I think that's, I don't think that would. No. I think linking to the real world would cheapen it because I considered something similar with other things I've written and that breaks immersion was is mm. what I realized. So I've made a strong decision to not do that. Uh, tying into different stories you built in a clever and surprising way. I find that rewarding personally, That's and, interesting. but it's, it's different than tying it into the real world. The real like, world. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I th yeah, I think it's all about execution, right? Like you could do it poorly and it could make everything not matter, but and I think there's a way to do it that can elevate things. Well, the the perfect way to do it is like uh the matrix. There's a whole way of approaching it where kind of like you make a fantasy rabbit hole 
that you, you present it as if it could be real, like the matrix could be real. Well, yeah. it's not deceitful, though. I think, again, it ties back into trust because the matrix doesn't present it. So it's established pretty early on. Like the whole premise of the story is this is what our world could be in the future. But if you build an entire fantasy or sci-fi story, well, sci-fi is kind of, maybe that's like, that's one differentiating between fantasy and sci-fi. Fantasy is supposed to be an else world. Sci-fi is supposed to be the future of our world. So specifically fantasy, if you build a whole fantasy world and later on you tie it into, well, it's actually like a futuristic form of like reality, it could ruin it. It could. You have to be very careful for it not, for it not to. Yeah, be Don't careful, really Mike. Tread carefully. I don't know. Maybe you can make it work. I don't. I don't know what you're gonna do. Tread carefully. It's gonna be great. All right, that's totally the end works. of the show. Really? <laughs> no, <laughs> we didn't even talk about like the. Okay, okay. Let's uh, complain a bit about the idea of we didn't even get to talking about the mantle. Okay. This whole idea that a character can't just be passed on. Mantle. A character is nothing more than their costume and weapon or some shit right have we i mean well, that pisses me off and i'm not even that into superhero stuff and that's primarily see, what they're fucking with here's the thing here's why i brought up the mask is an original example if the mantle you pass on actually does expose an aspect of that character using the mantle then it would actually be great do you know what i mean like if yeah. uh being batman had something to it in of being just Batman that wasn't just already baked into um that character as a person. You know what I mean? Something more similar to the mask. No, like someone I, if someone I, has a power transferred to them and you see that how that power is amplifies that particular person and it's transferred from one to the other. Yeah, I'm trying to think of something like that. Can't think of anything else that's done it other than the mask. Uh, Vaughn says that Jenna prefer oh. characters being Spider Man character. Um, not not every character needs to be a mantle. I think there's a gradient of it because a lot of the critique of say, well, Spider Man, who's a real Spider Man, and all those all the million and one characters like, ooh, female Loki. The issue is more is not just as simple as characters can't have a mantle to be passed down it really depends because i mean i don't know fucking superhero comics correct me if i'm wrong like robin is a is there's like a million robins yeah, it's probably it like, seem like that's five, a robin. Four, right five so that is different than like thor like it just even me as somebody that doesn't fucking read marvel comics it's just absurd to say that thor is just a name that can't because that's his actual name and that character is on a different end of a great of that gradient of well is this a mantle no it's not this is just him and the hammer is specifically for him and there's less room to change and that's kind of the parameters that are implied when you create the character and again it's about audience trust you define the parameters of a character how much of them is the mantle and is the the mask so to say and if you break that trust in the audience will not like it well, how about this? Um, I have two points. One of them, I thought of, I guess, Shazam. So, like, Shazam, before it was Shazam, it's called Captain Marvel, before the lawsuit or whatever. So, Captain Marvel, Billy Batson is Captain Marvel. He could break off some of his power and give it to his friends, like Freddy. So, Freddy Marvel, he says, uh, especially in, like, the Jeff Johns run, he's got this whole family. So, they each have shazam powers but when they call shazam's name and turn into him they age up and they are themselves like they are not behind a mask or anything right so they keep their personality you know mary marvel freddie and uh the rest of the family have their own own personality i think that's why what makes that kind of family cool especially in the more modern uh jeff john stuff the other point I was going to make is the, in my opinion, the only cool s multiple Spider-Man are when they look vastly different and are vastly different. You know, where you have like Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Okay. Um, Spider-Man Noir, I always thought was cool because he's super different than Spider-Man. Uh, 2099, he's very different than Spider-Man. 
like when you you have these these characters where their personality doesn't show through their costume and it gets muddied up and it just looks like you know the same thing and then you lose that personality behind the mask you know if that makes sense do they interact with each other the original and the different version in the, um, the examples you've given um, just wondering because yeah. like when i i, I think it was the time good. travel episode like i bring up on red dwarf um like that's a sci-fi comedy that has really good character writing like it has re- they explore different versions of the same character a lot right like they'll have like a creature that sucks out a personality trait from a character and you see what this person would be like if they didn't have their weasel gene right that their, their cunt aspects it sucks <laughs> out all that cuntiness uh-huh. and then you get like a diff a different character who's like acts as like a contrasting mirror and it kind of like amplifies the meta character of that person rather than a tin of paint right like the alternate version can expose something about the original by contrasting with them yeah i could see well that would be like you know, take an opportunity to do like a mirror character, you know, a villain like that. You found uh, the only one other Red Dwarf fan? No, so, no, no. That's... There's plenty of Red Dwarf fans in our audience. Whenever I mention it, there's a bunch of people, like, probably not right now. Hey, look who's back. It's Narwhal. Hello. Hey. I went, I went to there? the out of focus dimension and I haven't come back yet. Uh, you're you're so, you're in limbo. Again. It's not the real narwhal. It's the novel mantle. Something's gone mantle. terribly wrong. Time. You're so, normally in purgatory. Help. Now you're in limbo. Tell my parents, I'm sorry. <laughs> what did you do? My God! <laughs> Damn, that cat fiasco really hit hard, huh? <laughs> Are you guys okay. wasted yet? No. I am almost just, wasted, but Narwhal, you'll be glad to know we haven't started on the topic at all. So this is a perfect timing. <laughs> no, we kind of not. have tried. We've tried really <laughs> hard to penetrate this, is, this vague topic. This is my second screwdriver. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Nice. Hashtag I don't have to be anywhere tomorrow. Yeah, get screwed. So, I <laughs> do. I have to drive my mom to my sister's. Good luck. Bottoms up. God, Jesus Bottoms up. Oh, we got Easter coming up uh, this weekend, guys. Happy Easter. Hope you guys uh, celebrate. Have some good food. Yeah, happy egg day, everyone. Have some eggs. Um, oh, one thing about the mantle. So I when I did that graveyard chip story for Mark and John, the bad guy in it, uh, his name's Toll, and spoilers, he uses a, like an artifact. It's this bell, this magical bell. He puts it on and he turns into this hunchback monster, right? So I, the, the idea I had for that character going forward, like if I was ever going to write that character again, if you give that bell to someone else, they would also turn into um, not the same monster. I wanted them to like look different because it would be like an inversion of their personality and their id coming out. Like the mask, uh, like Jake was talking about. With the, with if a different character got Connell's ability, it would be a different part of the body that shapeshifts, that kind of thing? Yes. Like if it was a girl, it would be a shape shifting boobs. Oh my god! Is that a ma- is is Carnal a man? Totally wasn't character? my idea. No, that's just you with Carnal's powers. <laughs> <laughs> shape shifting uh, tits. We have a question. Um, you know, I think I think <laughs> she kind of didn't. It was fifty fifty, but Dark Gifts simped over her and gave her the win. So yeah. Wait, what? Excuse me, what? What are you talking no, about? He gave, he gave a five minute timer to the vote. She was very far ahead in the vote. And yeah, was I was like, ahead in the vote. He what dragged out the vote up? until it was super close. I still say it was a tie, okay? He was not simping for me because I was winning and he extended the vote to make sure it was as close as possible. It was a tie. <laughs> it was a tie. I did like how he was like, Let's put it up to the spinner wheel. And Dylan was like, would you have any idea what that would do to my pride if I won because it of a, a wheel? I'm fine. I'm fine with it, it being a tie. It's, but I don't think Anthony was simping. He doesn't simp. It's fine. But Dylan's piece was great. He did a great yeah, composition with a surprise character as well. He's a great artist. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know if he's drawn Cyber Frog before because I had, so it was a little easier, I think. Yeah, it was fun. <clears throat> Camel, oh, See, it's a chat poll? Um, yeah, everything was wheel and then the voting was in the chat. Yeah. It's cool. Check out Anthony's show. Imagine if being filthy as was a mental. We'd all have to start taking showers and get a fucking comb. Be awesome. I need to grow some sideburns. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Oh, it's one of those switchblade comb things. Yeah, house ghost house gave it to me for my birthday. Nice. Hey, yeah, um, Phil, are you going to Dallas? I'm trying to. <laughs> are I don't you going to get a table? Now, are you? I might. I'm considering it. Uh, we're, so I think I think it has a wait list for tables, so <laughs> I'm trying to see if buddies get a table so we could all uh partner up together if but i hear getting, there's a wait list but i'm trying to go if you're getting a table let me know uh because it would inc be very helpful and encourage me if i had a table i just want to go hang out with people but yeah, yeah. i would i would love yes, to it. that would be cool that also would be awesome so let me know but I have one buddy who's not going to make it to Dallas and it's making me mad. Who's that? My buddy Nick. Oh, that's sad. Okay. Y'all, you know where everybody's going to be at. Heroes Con. That's two months from now because time fucking flies. God damn. I can't uh, I'm, be months. I know. I'm getting everybody I know to come to Heroes Con. It's in Charlotte. It's a really good comic focused show. It's going to be great. Um, a bunch of people are like fucking flying in. I'm getting a colorist is coming in from overseas and shit. I'm it's gonna, gonna awesome. enjoy it. Yeah. Richard Kyle C2E2. I will be at C2E2. We are bringing um, 25 arcade games. They hit us up, they want us there. And then uh, I'll have a bunch of stuff to sell as well. We have a table at the booth too. So if you guys are out, C2E2, swing by, come say hi. Oh, someone says, pick me up, Jake, on the way to Dallas. Where is... Uh, it's in Texas. Where is Heroes <laughs> located? Charlotte, North Carolina. It's like five hours north of Atlanta. We get to drive. We do get to do a five-hour road trip. Yes, you get to experience the American road trip. Yes! Uh, he's so happy. Man. Look at that. Oh, uh, he's so like, uh, Jake, Jake, you fun. get to see trees. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe I get to do an American road trip. Oh, I'm so happy. We have to start. I'll have every time we stop off, I'll start conversations with people. You'd be like, Jake's talking to strangers again. <laughs> like, it's, hello. It's probably going to be a whole group of people, too, because I know several friends that are flying into Atlanta. So it's probably going to be two cars, and we're just going to all drive. And half of you guys don't live here. So it'll be like, oh my God, American highways and trees. <laughs> is that what? Is that what? That. Your colorist is doing too. Yeah. They'll be in the convoy. They'll be in the convoy. Sorry, I know. <laughs> Jake, I, I would suggest <laughs> just not uh, being in the car that Irene's driving. Uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm okay with death already, sir. You you can, <laughs> but please wear a helmet. It's required for all Asian drivers. You can well, help her, her how, Jake. I you work, can help her I check the gas gauge. <laughs> yeah, and see if the tires are bare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can actually be the, yeah. the the man in the car, but no, I have to wear a helmet anyway because of the retardation. Glad you know. So, uh, <laughs> but yes, I do need somebody to help me make sure my tires aren't completely flat because I can't tell. Just leaning over the <laughs> the fucking shoulder. Notice the uh, fuel's looking pretty low there, Irene. <laughs> hey, I, I don't know. Hey. When I'm driving, someone's just like, what is that banging sound? I guess I should keep on going. Go, 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 go. Camel Moon says, Amy <laughs> put her blinker on once. That was 13 years ago, and it's still on. <laughs> That's 
that's not supposed to be. I thought there was just a light that's always on on like the right side. I get honked at all the time. Like I didn't think that was connected. That's you how see all the, You should see all the human oh, bones impacted into her front bumper. It's crazy. I thought that's just how bumpers look. They're just supposed to come with dents and like, you know, blood. Henry Bemis says Jake is telling in a peanut jug. I'm good at holding. Huh? Joseph says Frank right. Miller will be in Dallas in June. Yeah, so he's been going. Uh, he was at Chicago Fan Expo last year, which was really cool. We got to see him there. Him and Claremont and Klaus Jansen, Jay Lee. They had a bunch of big names. So uh, Fan Expo is getting some heavy hitters now. So I guess he's uh, going to Dallas Fan Expo as well, which is pretty sweet. That's the beginning of June. Damn, that's soon. You should book, I should book flights. Why do yeah. cons have to be... Cons should all only be after he, July. Cause Heroes you know, Con is what? The end of June? Yeah, it's the end of June. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. C2E2. I think there's uh, like a South Carolina con coming up as well, like next weekend. Comma Jet says Jake needs to buy an eight track copy of Convoy for the trip. Yet yeah, need to listen to something that isn't just nonstop night wish. <laughs> what? How do you know that's what I play? What? That's oh, I'm not that easily readable. It's probably the only music. No one would have it in any car trip. I can never play any music I like because anyone will be like, "What the fuck is this nonsense, Jake?" Like, I, I also have Ramstein. I'll have you know. Um, no, we Rain. won't play any music because we'll be too too busy screaming at each other the whole time. You gotta play car ride games. Yeah, you guys will be like, it's ornate. It's yeah. ornate is what happens when <laughs> Wait, you try what if We need to stream the whole thing. It'll be the best oh, show ever. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. You could do uh, get a camp, like a phone holder and then put it in the corner of the windshield, like suction cup it to it. And then to yeah. film the crash scream. Yeah, watch my <laughs> shit driving. <laughs> oh my god. Tune in, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad I get to go to America. I love I, listen, <laughs> people make fun of weeaboos. I've since I've been a kid, I've been like a full on Ameribu. I've always loved going on to over to America. I went to like Disney. Yes. World when I was like nine, I I didn't get to go back to the U.S. of gay for a long time. But yeah, like I I finally started being able to take trips back there in like 2012. I've been so many times. I fucking love it. I'll walk to a 7-Eleven and be like, "Wow, this is Dallas great." That's a, I, I do enjoy how Jake is just amazed by America. It's like um the accent, and, the accent, and Wait, everything. That's not even a fucking accent. I can't like, do it. it it's like stepping into an episode of The Simpsons. That's Everyone totally in America has a honky horn voice. They go, hi, 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 honky, 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 honky. And then everyone in Britain has a like, hey, 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 Yeah, voice. you guys do sound like that, yeah. It must be like going to mainland China. Everybody's like, for me. And that's just how they talk. Gross. So. All right, let's see. Yeah. Sounds weird. No, they're back to back. Jake. Come over for Dallas Con, stay a week, and then go to Heroes Con. This could happen. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Uh, Do yeah. it. They're literally there. It's the Dallas is the seventh through the ninth, <laughs> and then uh, Heroes is fourteenth through sixteenth. Father's I'm Day. really bad at organizing myself. Mm. And then you could stay That's even better. longer to go to Garden State, which is the week after that. In New Jersey. I will hate America by the end of this trip. <laughs> Wait, no, you got to stay that one because you'll be here for Juneteenth, which is a big American holiday that I want. It's you my really favorite American holiday. I can't wait to get out in the streets and celebrate really, that one. Really matters, yeah. You need to experience it. Plus, I remember. I was. I remember. I was. I was outside Trump Tower the day before that guy got elected. And there was. It was great. I was in New York. Really? I was like, we you need were? to go to Trump Tower just the day before the election. It was great. Uh, it was Hold like on. there was a bunch of people processing outside, but like it was a really small group. But then there were like 
camera crews filming them and if you looked in their little lens thing you could see like the cropped version and it made it look like a big group of protesters but it was like really? tiny you it was like tiny witnessing no. the misinformation yeah, yeah i was right there <laughs> directly witnessing nice. and then the funnily enough like not ne- not far away from it was like a fucking hillary and clinton protest that was like way bigger that was no cameras it was like oh my God. it was that's crazy. I That's wish so I funny. was there. That's great. Mm. Yeah, you really should come to America on election year and pray you don't get stuck here because everything's going to burn down. I did last time. Oh, no, the just, time before last time. Just don't stay until fall. You, sh- you should be fine in the summer. <laughs> I don't think I we'll start put... burning things down in the middle of the Yeah, yeah. Summer. It'll be good. Just find somewhere to stay. Do you, do you get six months in the country? Just to find a place to stay for like six months and then... You on the ESTA visa, I think you get yeah. six months in the country. You get, I like... think you get six months if you're a UK citizen. Pause the question. Just look around and mooch off of us for six months. <laughs> yeah, I can work on my iPad. I got a Only futon. You hang out with my dog. You love him, dude. Oh damn it! That's pretty cool. <laughs> Makes him so big. You love my dog. Here's my face. Well, but your name tag is covering your dog. That? Hold on. Uh, brand. I saw your dog. He was all like wiggling his footsies. It was cute. There he is. Oh, look. Oh, so cute. Oh, wow, yeah. What's with his orb of power going on? <laughs> it's like a nighttime call. Like you go walk him and he's got a light on him during the night. <laughs> you just leave it on all day. Oh, my girlfriend put it on him. She's like, oh, he'll jump in there and they'll be able to see him on stream. Did you see that video of that dog that learned how to fucking fire elastic bands at at (laughs) cops? Yeah. Yeah, I sent that to my girlfriend. She's like, yeah, I saw that like three years ago. I'm like, sorry. What? We're not up on it. We're not up on the dog game. Dog ballistics. Daily has a good point. Just claim, just pretend you're a South American or something. And then you'll come in through. Yeah, the just come over through Mexico. Yeah, you gotta stay forever. Well, you don't need to, you don't need to pre- you don't need to pretend to be anything else. You just just come in through the Mexican border. I could just become a a, a, a homeless American person. So you don't speak English. <laughs> so oh, Paul, hello. I don't speak of the English. Paul wants to know if we boys are going to run the arcade or two two. Yeah, we're gonna have a arcade boost. And my brother and I will be running it. We'll probably have a couple other guys there. And uh, I'm sure I'll be able to walk around for, you know, a couple of times a day. Um, and we'll also have comics there as well that you guys could buy. And I'm, posters, I I'm excited because uh, every con I've been to so far, I've only had Fiendish 1 and 2. And all of a sudden, because I did a lot of shows like right before Fiendish 2 printed, I'm going to have one, two, and 2.5. So three books all at once is going to be great. Like, it's such a good feeling to have yeah. this 150 pages of material all together with those three yeah. books. And it's great. So I have an actual, I'll be able to just fill my table with Fiendish books and all the merch and stuff. And I'm really looking forward to shows this year. How many yeah. Bedeviled books do you have left? I've got a few. I still got like 50 of them. I printed way too much, but I will be bringing those as well. Those are con exclusives. Great coloring in those button numbers. What does this mean? Pretty good. You know, I've been I've been looking over the PDF of two point five. I'm actually really happy with the colors that I did on that. I'm not trying to blow my own horn, but like now I'm disconnected from the project and don't have to like do any more work on it. I get to like see it from a different perspective. It looks so cool. I did. I yeah. You should you be did happy. you did really good. You I mean you planned everything out with the color scheming and I mean if you have pretty good color direction as well because I had this whole idea of these yeah. cold cold and warm tones. Hey, hold on. Jay can talk himself up, but I can't. What what is this? Why can't I just you okay. know be happy? I with def- the I definitely I listened to all her direction, Phil, and didn't just do whatever I wanted anyway. <laughs> he did whatever he wanted, but it turned out really great. No, it, it really is it's such a good looking book. Um, you guys are gonna love it. Yeah, is this what you're doing, Irene? Color scheming and scamming? Yeah, that's what I do. All I do is color scheming and scheme some scams. 
<laughs> Such a beautiful voice. <laughs> um, no, that's going to be great because now that you've knocked out a uh, fiendish, you're even an even better colorist for when you color that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, I know. Go wild on it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll have that uh, ready for Dallas. That little ash can thing. Hey, hey, speaking of cons, before, um, hold on. Will this get you struck? I think this will be fine. There's, is this okay? There's no, no actual nudity. It's covered by everything. Yeah, it's, everything's it's covered. covered. Okay, I'm just going to oh, be no. safe. But anyways, here is the con exclusive art book. I think um, I have that. Uh, yeah, I brought it to Tampa. So there. this is an art book I only bring to conventions. So I still have a bunch left. I was going to do a larger expanded art book because I like to, you guys know I like to draw my big booby demon girls. But I'm probably Ooh. not going to put that out yet. I'm going to wait for a while till I have more material. So this is going to be my convention thingamajig. So if you like how this looks then find me at a convention this year i i'll be doing heroes sofa which is in bogota colombia so i mean if you're in colombia i don't know <laughs> but i will be there and i might be doing dallas so come find me and uh, this is these are jake's colors look really great i looked at them so. recently they're actually, they're actually pretty good <laughs> i was like oh no, man i put a lot of no, this is a while ago. no jake's a really good colors and i would show you more but everything inside is oh did I you show you the, did i get on. that in tampa is that where you had it you would have yeah yeah, yeah. that okay. was the first con it was at. here you go look at that yeah it's, it's got some awesome stuff in it. i can't show the other page just titties some but it's full of titties, titties. I want to call them more of those you can go ahead i'll pay you Yes. Jeff, I is Jeff a is Jeff a Brit? No, he's in Europe though. Oh okay. Uh, I really want one. Can you grab me one, Jake? But you the art thing? Just can't try and come to the convention if I'm going there. You can well, go he's there. in Europe. Yeah, he's in uh, far away. Her books. He says. Bring yeah, she back. decided against putting them in her shop, so he can't buy it. Yeah, because I already said it's hype convention. Juice. Juice. I feel I feel but I, I, this is not right if I say it's a convention exclusive and I put it up on the store. It's not right. That's why I wanted to give Jake money so he could pick it up for him and then ship it to him. Hey, <laughs> yeah. you guys want to work something out on your own? That's fine, but there I were, need to that, honor my promises. Yeah. There were some people that got that art book who didn't go to Tampa, and they did get other people to send it to them. Apparently, I've seen. They did. I know they did. That's fine by me, but I have to honor my promises. What do you have so against Germany? Germany. Uh, nothing personally. But Was it the know. fact that they, uh, but you know, did to go to war against the world, or did the what? world decide to go to war against them? It's all about perspective. <laughs> Vaughn says solution: don't make promises. Yeah. I should stop doing that. I should promise nothing. I henceforth promise you nothing. Uh, everything is pure chaos from now. Yeah, on co the Connell campaign, there's going to be no actual shipping date. <laughs> no, wait, you can't do that. Wait, you can actually do that on Indiegogo. <laughs> My hands are. Don't do that. Time. That's going to annoy shipping people. Date. Whenever. No. I'm not launching my next campaign until I have most of the work done, so. You know what? Speaking of getting shit done on our projects, there is actually a question I wanted to ask you guys. And yeah. it's about are you ever thumbnailing a scene or writing a scene and you have more shit you want to actually get done in that scene, but you already feel like you've been in that scene for too long? Mm. No. Yeah. And you want to get out of it? Yeah. 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 That's my entire current experience because no. you know why. <laughs> well, you you're trying to get to a plot point, and it's like it's more about the journey than the destination. But you, sometimes you've been the characters have been in a room for too long, right. and you're like, can you they just not? Can I like I've done like ten different camera angles. I can't think of more camera angles in this goddamn room. <laughs> huh. I, I think 
I think the solution then is you change the physicality of the scene. Like, I have a character in a cage, and then the cage halfway through the scene gets smashed, and then they're, like, dangling from a rope. It's I like think a that's a pretty good... Yeah. That's a pretty good solution. Cool. Or you can... Changing the physicality is good, it, but if that doesn't work, because there are some scenes where that wouldn't work, you can also think about what plot points or what developments I'm trying to get to and move that to a different location because that all boils down to some things can happen at a different location and I've had some breakthroughs where it's like oh this conversation actually works better if it's here yeah what's funny is I had a conversation explaining a certain element of world building about a certain race yeah I, I good blocking good composition triangles it's all about triangles um I remember that there was a world building explanation and I'm like the scene perfectly put a character in position where they could explain it earlier. So it got like robbed from one wise character and given to another wise character. And it just happened way sooner. But the scene that that got added to, I'm like, if they've been in this room for too long, like it's been three spreads. Like if characters you have know, been in the same, same space for three spreads. If on. they've been in the room too long, there's some things you can do. Like Shakespeare does it, and freaking like whatever. Some of that they'll they'll just have a new character enter. So I don't know if that helps, but if you like mix up the mix it up a little bit somehow. But the thing I was saying, I was thinking, is you could have an explosion happen, then they could still be in the room. But I kind of did that. I kind of did that. Like some, the one have someone's head explode. <laughs> <laughs> just randomly, the village. <laughs> Oh dear, your head exploded. Well, let's direct the scene towards this point of focus now. Speaking of point of focus, look at this uh, campaign. Expertly done. Hey, hey. I think I'm I'm still I'm sixty nine bucks from seven thousand. So who's going to be the sixty nine? Sixty nine. Yeah, sixty nine. Well, that's 69. the problem. Nobody wants to break the sixty nine. You shouldn't sell it that 69. way. <laughs> I know I got stuck at sixty nine. There could be worse ones to get stuck at. I guess that's not still. a bad problem. If you are a narwhal completionist, you need to grab this. It it wraps into Earthbound. It's a new part to Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. So head on over to Fun My Comic and grab it. I mean, this guy is all over the place. Mark Miller's talking about him. Look at that. Can we all just agree that 69ing is more trouble than it's worth? No. That's what they teach you in college or whatever. But <laughs> they teach what's, the wait, wait. what's the payoff? They what are you, you what kind of know? classes were you having in college? <laughs> who, who taught you this in college? <laughs> you know, like the 40-year-old teacher, like the woman. <laughs> no. Okay, I feel like you had a very I don't was are you sure that was I want to apply to your college one. novel. Yeah. <laughs> when I go there. It might have been illegal. I don't know. See, no one agrees with you, Jake. <laughs> what? It's just, what are you, what is everyone doing? I'm Who's focusing not, on I'm what? I'm not interested. Let's move on. <laughs> My God, I don't want to know. <laughs> so, Narwhal's it's campaign. A, it's so like earthbound. Two fights so, at once. So Grand Prix. <laughs> yeah, Grand Prix, everyone. Check it out. You um, got chicks with afros. Yeah, and that's let's read that dialogue. It's good dialogue. I'll read it here. He goes, Yeah, I use the, yeah, they use me as a bre okay. Yeah, they use me as a breeder at an alien zoo for a while. Let me tell you, I learned a thing or two about women. Mm -hmm. And she says, You're cute. Yeah, he learned that 69ing isn't worth the effort. It's like oh trying to God. fill up your car and with gas oh and eating your Twinkie at the same time. Hey, don't put words in Blogart's mouth. But <laughs> Cheers, everybody. She is very, she is wonderfully drawn. I love the purple shadows on her, and I love the purple tone to her skin. It was, very, yeah, cool. it was a very good drawing. She's good great. She looks great. Good attitude. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, and this one, it's halfway through the campaign, so pretty soon I'm going to launch the Indiegogo. But the Indiegogo will not come with the free mini-comic, which a few people have the mini-comic now. I think we read it last week, so you guys know it's the giant banana one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
It's a great one. So if you want free mini comic back on from my comic, just set up an account. It's easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as they say. It is, yeah, yeah. Everything goes smooth. Sometimes people were having issues, and it's because I think you just got to set up an account, and then everything is, goes super smooth. But if mm -hmm. you don't, then there can be annoying or whatever. But <laughs> yeah, go go grab it uh, while you're over there. While you're over there too, go grab that uh, the trading card campaign because an Earthbound character is in that right. The Iron Age icons is that right? Yeah. Whiz Kid. Yep. Yeah, that that campaign is awesome. Yeah, super and cool. I backed it and can't wait. So get those. Buy one back one. Fill my comic. Lots of good stuff available on it. Um, yes. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, so the Indiegogo might launch soon-ish. I'm gonna. I'm doing a little mini. The only scheme I got for that for promo is, um, I have the, kind of the big mailing list, and that's gonna have an update with a preview of some of the Percival pages I've been testing, trying to draw them traditionally. Okay. So that will be like, that's like top secret, but it will go to the mailing list. And then that will also give the link to the Indiegogo for Grand Prix. So people, so I'll just let people know, like keeping the Grand Prix moving. Sweet. Uh, also, you guys, we talked a little bit about that uh, uh, Adam Miller's campaign. Talked a little bit about Irene's new website updates that are coming. You can get her past stuff on the website, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just so everyone knows, I'm open to feedback. I'll probably talk a little more about it on my Sunday draw stream, but um, that's why I'm holding off on just updating it because I want to hear what the audience thinks. So let me know if you don't like what I'm presenting, if you think I should change the whole subscription and pass idea let me know because i listen to what the audience says but yeah i have a website update coming really soon i have passes for the fiendish website so you can see behind the scenes stuff in the blog and soon you should be able to read chapters of the comic digitally after the physical books are fulfilled and the nuances of that will work out but um it should be happening so look forward to that kick ass because uh, Bob, student of Bob, I like to call him, says, uh, <laughs> chop that whiz kid trading card. Oh, yeah, there. look at that. Nice. From Adam Miller. That's a sexy whiz kid. Damn. Whoa, yeah. Who would have thought that was a whiz kid look like? Damn. <laughs> Adam Miller. <laughs> like a yeah, badass he, there. He's gone through changes because he's kind of, he's like 19 or 18 and earthbound. And then, mm -hmm. um, does not like look like a 19 year old. Yeah. <laughs> and then in Grand, in Grand Prix, right? <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah. And then in Grand Prix, he's like 23, so he's like buffer and shit. This is buff version, I think. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Everybody check that out. There's like 48 of these cards. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I love that. <clears throat> Let's see yeah, what he else does, he's done a ton of these paintings for a bunch of characters so yeah everybody check that cool. out if you get a cool drop a link think. to that as well and they'll, all of our links are down below you guys i dropped this earlier you could sign up for carnal the barbarian which is oh hell yeah and soon we saw some badass uh art concept art for that earlier yes sign up for it i'm up to page third well i delete this page hold on i'm up to page 13 on the roughs uh, delete page. Just delete it. Actually, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, crap. Anyway. Uh, look. I, the, these, you can't see... Hopefully, you can't see what's going on. But look, these are, the, like, the first 13 pages that I've, like, fully lettered and done run rough pencils for. I love doing the letters early so that, you know, the whole page is composed. Uh, and once I've gone through the whole book doing this, which is, like, version 8 of the freaking layouts... Uh, I'll print these off and start inking them properly. But yeah, super happy about it. Like, I've been doing lots of character designs. And uh, let me pull them up. Can share them. I do have them ready. Sweet. Um, but yeah, go to connellcomic.com and sign up for uh, Connell the Barbarian. Or you I, to I'm up nice. <clears throat> but yeah, the, those uh, I was trying to show these off earlier. These are like the revised seedling designs. The sheedling, the, the seed shaman. And they got like uh, stockings now. Yeah, but like it's, it's the underlayer. Like the yeah. 
A skin's been peeled off. That's it's cool. weird. Almost like looks it. like kind of like hairy legs at the bottom. <laughs> no <way. laughs> I just have to say it a little bit. It's gotta I be like slightly the, weird. I like the differentiation though of like the um the stocking that part. That's cool. And I've, there's even like the percentage of like how they show up in because all of these are like fully formed seedlings just some of them are taller than others uh -huh. so like if you look at the little guy like 80 percent of the population of the seedlings is like that guy uh and then like can i mouse like yeah 80 percent is this guy 10 percent is this guy and these are like five and five who knows how rare the seedling queen is and like here it says like one per crop but yeah i've, I've liked finally putting all of them in actual heights next to each other that's yes. um and, this and is the game designer brain speaking. This is fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> I do you know what? No, speaking of thick lives, I haven't shown this one off, but there's there is a diff there is another female block who is very thick indeed. And I can show it off for everyone right now. I can show her off. Her name is Meat. She ends up becoming a main character. And um I guess here she is. Meat! Nice. Wait! That's the old version where she isn't. She's like way taller. She's like seven foot now. <laughs> yeah, I did it wrong. Dude. I pulled up the wrong thing. Wow, but failure. Me. Look at those thighs, though. Connell's a bit taller now as well. I think Connell's like five three. Really? He's too Why short make him... Really? It's just oh, this so he's is Wolverine. Well, mm, okay. I'm going back and forth on it. It's just putting all the characters next to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Not enough. That's what we feel like. Too, every day mm. P putting all the characters in height next to each other lets you see where everyone's eye lines would be or possible compositions of shots would be in the future you know what i mean and so i don't want it to be too short but you go switch mm -hmm. back to the ceiling green but yeah i've done tons of character designs this week and a bunch of pages like uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get it all drawn the whole book all 54 pages now uh, right. Before we launch in October for uh, Cocktober, where the hell is the October. man? I don't think I ever saved out the version where like her proper. Just height imagine is. meat, but two feet taller. She's yeah, she is freaking huge. Like um, does it? They can the, all of the other uh, female blokes are like a lot more typically heighted. So you know, there's a whole dynamic where they can just make fun of her for being like the freak. Um, but yeah, nice. I've been really enjoying it. So sign up at connellcomic.com or bluedickaxe.com to be ready for uh, when this book launches. I'll, I'm gonna, you know, uh, probably put out a bunch of updates before that to show stuff off that I'm not showing on streams. Michael wants to know okay. if you read J Axe Wilder John, Jake. No, not yet. It's pretty good. I don't have it. Oh, you don't? Did the Axe Wilder John actually have a crowdfunding campaign or is it like a Release? Yeah, it was yeah. it was on Zoop, right? Uh, oh. Yeah, it was on Zoop. You I don't it. have a Zoop. I guess I yes. missed it. I, I've 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 got a bunch of uh, books to read though. That like um, awesome Lawson, Adam Lawson. He suggested some comedic books to oh, read. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I never watched. I never read Axe Wheel to John. Why? Are the similarities? Does he have the same wrist cuffs as Connell? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe they're both barbarians. You know what? I could I could probably flick through those character designs I showed off earlier. If people are, who are here now weren't here earlier, let me. See. No, they they're not here anymore. Everybody not. Here. Okay. Angela, <laughs> well, Angela okay. Says that bone is ornate. Yeah, I mean, there's it. It's a story relevant bone. I'm telling you now. Story uh, relevant, like my diamond that, panels that you. That is a story relevant on. bone. Oh, and is it? It's still, it can be story relevant and ornate at the same time, Jake. That's not an ornate bone. What do you have a, what do you have a problem with ornate things now, Jake? What's what's wrong? Here's the thing about ornate. I actually hate ornate as a thing. Oh, the oh, fuck you don't. No, hey, I wait, dis wait, 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 wait. No fucking I dislike right now, ornate. Going on oh, about ornate hey, like, this is a preview of your guys' road trip. <laughs> <laughs> I have it's a question, by the way. I have a question. Jake, go back to that carnal drawing. Yeah. 
So if you zoom in on that shading on his arm, it's kind of like three tone. I've seen this with like web comics too. So it goes from light and then up between the light and shadow, you have like a red color. Yes, there's energy in the Terminator line. Yeah. And then you have the dark color. It, do you do that? Do you have to pick three colors and paint in three? Or is it burn will let you do that? Or do you know? Color dodge I th lets you do that. If you have the... So, if say if you have like a gradient of highlight across the character overall, the co set to color dodge, it'll put energy in the Terminator line of the shadows. I think that's what I've been using. I used it on Phoenix 2.5. Or... Um, Right. Or you can, I just remember, you can start with a dark tone and pull the light out of a dark tone, set it to overlay. And then it, Does depending it do on that, the color, it, it would. Overlay or some. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because the idea would be like, if you can just actually be using two colors, but it gives you three, I like that because that saves time and that looks really nice, actually. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's what. Putting, yeah, you literally only use a shadow color and an overall gradient for all the, the highlights across the character. Because in 3D model texturing, you'll put like a you'll put a gradient going across the whole character from light to dark at the bottom that plants it on the ground. You'll do like as yeah. as zenith highlight too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's super fucking easy and it looks great. Like some people pick the specific color. In fact, if you are uh, shaded. The entire thing, you can use gradient maps that'll basically map the black to white to a range of colors on a gradient, and you can like specifically. Then you could specifically pick them. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Gradient maps are. I mean, it, they're they're a bit of a pain sometimes, but they're very useful other times. I don't know. If you're um, turning black and white art with shading into colored art, use a gradient map. I mean, obviously. Oh yeah, there you go. There's the, the real colorist. It says hard light, vivid light, thin light. Listen to Jake and Bancroft. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I found I found okay. that glow dodge does it the the color dodge does it the most than all okay. of those. Um, and but Bancroft made a point on one of his coloring streams that people pick a specific blend mode to make stuff pop, and then when it actually prints, it looks really muddy and gray. Um. But I think that's people who are trying to get like the really bright greens and blues by using a blending mode, but then they, they never print anyway. So, yeah, I have a weird process. What I do is I start with a mid tone and I knock in shadows with multiply, highlights with overlay, but I do a channel mixer and o over everything, just filter the shit out of it on top. And that pulls, that adds a color tint to the mid tones and shadows and highlights. Mm. So that gets rid of the muddiness, but don't work. Most people don't work like that. That's a stupid way of working. One thing I really fucking love doing is having the scene a color. So all of the highlights will essentially be a color, which is like the color of the light. Then you put a layer of the, over the top of everything, which is set to lighten. And it's a really dark color, but it's a complementary color to the main color. So the shadows and like if the main light color is blue, as that goes to dark, it'll go to like a dark red and you'll get that full gradient of color. But then you obviously remove the line art from that layer. Otherwise it would color the line art. The line art wouldn't be black anymore because it's a light and layer. Oh, that's probably what sounds really- Painstakingly color hold the line art bit by bit. You could do that. Like a psycho. <laughs> all and you I have to do is control balance. click on the layer. I, I put all the line art in a mask in a folder so I can color the line specifically. A clipping mask to oh you know how I do it. We know. Yeah the yeah. the big oh, debacle. Awesome. Wait guys awesome one sending in the canes. What? She's my favorite. She's the best. She has the most personality by the way. Oh no, it's all about Dee Dee. What do you, okay actually tell me what you think of these characters on looking at them because I can't see them through your eyes. I see them as the creator. Uh, Dee Dee is the most fun. What what kind of fun does she enjoy? Uh, I, mean, I don't know what she enjoys, but Dee Dee was going to be the first one to die. Oh my god, she's the most. She looks like a ditz. Okay, 
That's why she dies. <laughs> My perspective is different because I don't want to fuck them. But I, yeah, I don't want to be around Dee Dee because she looks stupid she and she's right. probably going to get everybody killed. Oh, yeah. see? Yeah. Everyone's favorite. You're throwing Dee Dee. <laughs> <the most. laughs> you know okay, fine. I'll kill Twist instead. No, I like Twist. <laughs> fuck <laughs> no. <laughs> All the guys like Dee Dee. No one likes Stabitha. No, uh, she was, she's bitchy and ugly, just like Ash. I like Elmar first. I like Elmar too. She looks. Um, it's. I want to. For me, it's like, well, who looks like they're not a bitch and not crazy and would survive in the apocalypse? <sighs> so there you go. That's my prayer. Oh no, she is definitely crazy. The, <laughs> I can't. I, she looks like a vampire. She's great. She's the best. She, seems she looks nice, elegant but... to me. That's why she said her name is Elgnar because she's elegant and then has a bl- oh, orc word. So it's like Elgnar. Elegant. Wow, what about I... Puff Puff? Why is Puff Puff's name Puff Puff? Because she's r- really skinny and is in no way puffy. Why does she have muddy feet? She, she has a head like a pork bun. She's great. And and everyone Actually, makes everyone she, makes all the rest of them fun. She Puff Puff would be like the surprise character where you think she just eats a lot and she's just the, the chubby girl that is is there for comedic relief. But she would probably I get the feeling she would kick ass out of the blue, and I would definitely want to be her friend. She's basically the female version of Clancy. See, Clancy's cool, though. <laughs> what? <laughs> Tina. She's so happy. Look at him. Clancy has a fucking tool shed full of body pots. <laughs> like, sharpens his axe and says, good morning, neighbor, every morning. Oh. But he has fucking berries, but bodies buried under his lawn. <laughs> He was saying, I don't know what to think about this comic anymore. No, Clancy is the one that was saying boo earns. You know, <laughs> I was saying boo earns. No, I I was saying blue orc. <laughs> Are they saying block or blue, blue orc? orc? I was, dude, you gotta use that joke. <laughs> I was now. saying blue orc. <laughs> you gotta put, you have to use Clancy. <laughs> To be in the <laughs> so I was like, already... are you saying blork or blue orc? <laughs> <laughs> I was saying blue orc. That's, yeah. that's fucking great. They all you know what you should do, Jake? Have Clancy and the little shaman uh turnip guy have them team up and then have Carnal die and have them be the main character. <laughs> they would be the main Perfect. buddy cops. <laughs> oh, the, it's funny how much the story like when I was designing all these characters I'm like man I want to see these guys stories and then I realized that's actually most of the fucking book actually is these guys stories it's called <laughs> Connell the Barbarian and like should be cool like well you know what that's a good way to do it that's like the Mad Max formula where Mad Max stumbles into someone else's story Mm. And he can kind of affect it, but it's not really his story. And then he moves on at the end. Sure, the wandering hero. Yeah. Just Bancroft saying there has to be a Melman reference. There's already a Lord of the Rings reference. Like yeah, I flipped it on his head. When they, there's there's a point where they're trying to get frisky with this character. Mm-hmm. And instead of saying meats back on the menu, they say salads back on the menu, boys. <laughs> That's you gotta great. Do the, the blue orc. <laughs> I was saying blue. <laughs> I remember, I remember reading that line and being like, "Wait, is is that like a reference to tossing salad?" Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> All right, I had to put a lot of. There's a page and it had like no jokes on it. I'm like, I'm just gonna make them say a lot of plant puns while they're trying to non-consensualize this tree woman. She's so majestic. <clears throat> Sign up for Carnal, everybody. Sign up for Carnal. Non- non-consensualizing tree people. They're trees. Trees don't <laughs> I love it. have feelings. Trees don't yeah. have rights. Oh, my God. No, they don't. 
disgusting. We do whatever we want to them. Magical but creatures you, definitely don't in Connell's world, but you guys have the right to back the Lost Pages three now on Indiegogo. It's going to be shipping soon. It's it's in production at the printers. All of the uh, main books are in production at the printers right now. We're so close to 42K, so if you guys haven't back, now's the time to back. Uh, you could get the whole collected tome, which I don't know where it is. Oh, here it is. I've uh, already printed. These are already printed and ready to roll. So the collected tomes are in, and you can get up to 212 pages of awesome previous story action and uh right probably next week we're going to be printing the free kenneth rocafort trading cards that everyone's going to be getting if you do back so better back so you can get one of these awesome cards and the people ash can is ready to be printed freaking awesome the tones look so good black and white uh vigilante storytelling if you guys love frank miller's stuff like sin city his daredevil run a lot of that has inspired this character and uh eventually we'll do a issue three down the line which will wrap up this story and i think what i want to do is because these are smaller sized ash cans i want to collect the whole story arc um and do it full comic size and probably get it colored so we'll do a collection later on down the, the line so check that out if you guys have not thank you everybody for backing <clears throat> it's been an awesome campaign and uh when we get those in i think on the 12th of april is the estimated delivery date for the stuff to be over here we're going to start shipping them shipping them out it's gonna be good nice. excited but yeah, that's it. That's been the show. Good show. And yeah, thanks. Thanks for the meme, good, Alex. Don't lie. Good, to uh, me. good, totally normal, well scheduled show. Yeah, I think the PowerPoint topic. went well. Narwhal, I'm sorry you missed the PowerPoint. It, it was, was really illustrious. Good. It was your best PowerPoint yet. Very impactful. Phil drew so many example layouts. Oh, Alex is posting what he has. All right, let's see. Let's do the uh, proper, proper. Feels like show another ending. ten minutes of this bullshit. <laughs> it was a poignant show. You know what? I, I am impressed, Phil. I am impressed. You've done almost three hours. I mean, a lot. Of it was a hanging out in chat. It was a pertinent show. We have discovered that we can actually just bullshit an entire show. Yeah, and we have. Uh, I mean, we have stuff to talk viewers. about. Well, now we got to step it up because we're going to be having these bitter big raids from Dark Gifts channel. We're going to really <laughs> bring it. Bitter big raids, my God. <laughs> big raids. I wouldn't describe it that way. Um, well, he's not Bancraft. doing the show every week. but Yeah, know. it's not an every week thing, Phil. Oh, it's, it's every not. week for the first two. Just because yeah. he wants to do it consecutive for the first two. Yeah, I and think, I don't know what, it's like every schedule. other or something that's cool yeah thank you everyone who joined over from anthony's channel much appreciated so be sure to subscribe to everybody here yes subscribe to us <laughs> i think it's on someone's channel next i'll take it if narwhal's closing the same day then it'll be a pain for him to do this wait is that no, he's drawing. Remember, he's doing the... Oh, the... you're doing a drawing. Yeah, I'll be competing. So okay. maybe it would be good if Irene, if you don't mind switching. Yeah, well, I'll don't, take it. Don't yeah, next that. week it'll be my Then channel. totally switch back afterwards. Yep, totally. Nice. Here's Alex's meme. Oh, I like it. <clears throat> Great. <laughs> Look, that's Narwhal and his Soy Zoro now. My mask. I'm going after Alice, man. It's already begun. The propaganda machine. <laughs> yes. The normal fight. nudge. Fight, fight. fight. <laughs> I like this. Look, we got no Alazmat in the background there. <laughs> I always feel crestfallen to watch the the ever evolving conflict between Alazmat and the Quaff. It's yeah, they they do kayfabe better than anyone else. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like they have a lot of fun. 
All right, we got me over here. I am the Phil Diaz. We got the people in the background, straight off of uh, page two of the people. The people. Is that me with my gray hair? I appreciate it. I love my gray hair. Gray hair. Yeah, I got a lot of gray hair. You should be able to see it. I think. Oh, I do see it. Oh my God. Yeah. Phil, why are you so old, Phil? I, I was born with gray hair. I want to talk. <laughs> I need a trim, I think. Um, mullet's coming in, though. Look at that. Uh, I say, I feel like you guys are lying to me. Yeah, that's true. I did say that. <laughs> and I still cool. feel like that. It's called we gaslighting. Never lie to you. What are and you it's, talking about? We're, it's lying we're with style. Friends. It's not called gaslighting. Mm. Gaslighting is lying with style. Look at Irene and her leather. We're all in leather, silly. Um, no. The masks are all leather because it's behind a mask. Okay, Alex. Anyway. In a future, in a future, Mimi needs to make a really cute creature that looks like uh, Sylvanian families toy but wearing like black leather emo shit <laughs> it'll go down very well well i i appreciate the uh the mask and alex you photoshopping everything that i brought on stream tonight into one single panel <laughs> that was very well done <laughs> crazy really looking vampirella <laughs> holy shit yeah is that um, the hellion arts logo face in the face of the thing or is I have no so, idea what what that is. I don't. I don't yeah, actually cool. know. I like that thing. Yeah, but I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Do but, you have um, a problem with ornate things now, Jake? That's Irene. I don't like ornate. Uh, this is a funny misconception. I've been trying to convey the concept because it's something I actually don't like. You, are you reading your meme right now? Because you're saying exactly what your meme says. <laughs> is that what it says? No. No. Is that what he says. What does it say? Actually, what? I don't need as a thing. <laughs> Alex, he did the bluff, the bluff check. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bluffing. <laughs> the bluff check. Alex, you're, you're great. That's amazing. He's got, look, it's meat down here, right? Is that meat down there? Ah, oh, there she is, ready to be eaten up. Damn, that is so good. Like the Photoshop there. Me trying to encompass the concept of ornate is me actually trying to get over myself and start to have an appreciation for ornate elements when usually they make my skin crawl. And the more you explain it, the more the more it's unconvincing. The more unconvincing <laughs> I'm being fully it truthful. Oh, Why would I lie? Oh, that's great. Sure. Very great meme. Thank you very much, Alex. Beautiful. Ornateness is usually superfluous and annoying and takes you out of the experience. It makes you feel like you're reading a comic instead of being in a story. Yeah, but you can't spell superfluous without super. <laughs> Superfluous. I think. I don't know how it's spelled. <laughs> Let's uh, just go. The typewriter is backwards. Hold on. Someone said something. Um, <laughs> it is backwards! <laughs> oh, well, awesome. I appreciate this. Awesome one says, "Dirty sack is a good story, Phil." I appreciate that. You guys remember that dirty sack story I wrote? No, no. I blanked it from my memory. Oh my god! Go you back. Stuff? Yeah, I read it like on Halloween or something. I don't know. It's a dirty sack story. Go read it, yeah. and uh, we'll see you guys next week. All right. Hey everyone! Uh, tomorrow, yeah, tune in Diaz Brothers show. Um, are you doing a show tomorrow, Irene? I can't remember. I don't know if you're doing it today. Sure, yeah. My channel tomorrow. And if not, catch you guys on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Reading Draws is my channel. If tomorrow, I might be having a show. And Sunday, I'll definitely be having a show. It's a draw stream. So be there or be square. Thank you. Yes, and. Um, Say goodbye to my doggy. Doggy, doggy, doggy. Say goodbye to my little friend. See you guys. Uh, bye, bye, doggy. Probably raid you guys into Jack Show if they're still eating pizza. I'll be home with Bancroft tomorrow, by the way. Oh, sweet. Oh, nice. Yeah, cool. yeah that'll be after my show. Bye, everybody. Bye. bye. bye.